Right, what we'll do is we'll start with the yes again, right? Because that, that was <laughs> that's what you do. And right. that's for, for Owen, but uh, <coughs> aye, we'll, we'll start with the yes again. So if you are up for it, you can do it. If you don't want it, it's fine. But I don't. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> people are like, going to use stop saying yes. And that, man. <laughs> but it's, it's infectious. So we'll talk about that with, with yourself and all. Uh, right, okay, we'll kick off now then. <laughs> yes! How long can you say yes for, Quinny? I don't know, but it's going to get longer and longer every time. Welcome back to the Green Sunrise Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Charlie Boy Quinn. Uh, we've got three people in today. We're meant to have four, but we've had somebody come off uh, sick. Somebody's had a wee injury on the side of the park. So we've got three beautiful guys uh, who are coming out of the Green Sunrise podcast. And we're going to talk about them, but we're also going to talk about Stress Awareness Month, which, by the way, I didn't even know was a thing. Uh, but we've had it since here, since 1992, supposedly, Stress Awareness Month. So we're going to talk about that, but we're going to talk about the guests that we've got in today. So I'm going to kick off with a guest that I had in last week. No, oh, sorry, last time. Uh, brother Joseph Sonic Treasures, a guy that actually I caught going outside my house one day, right? And he was shouting yes out beside my window <laughs> with, with high tones like Axel Rose. And a, and a Guns N' Roses song. I thought, who's that who's in my back? But it was actually uh, Brother Joe. Welcome back, Joe. How are you going? Thank you very much, Paul. How are you? I'm How's good, you? mate. I'm good. I'm good. Yes! 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 Uh, yes, I'm very good. I'm very good and good. stressed. Yes. We'll, we'll talk about that. Obviously, we've been right. stressing well this month. We're going to get to that as well. Uh, well, it's the last time I've seen you. We were at David Holmes on it. David Holmes, yeah. David Holmes on it, yeah. That was the yeah. last time I've seen you and Brian uh, and young Adam. Oh, uh, what a gig. That was great. Oh, David Holmes was uh, amazing. And that was stress free. Yes. The first time we done them in lunches upstairs, it was it Aye. was very stressful the next, you know, Aye, because it was like, trying to do it, but we, we laid the foundations correctly last Aye. time. And, Aye, it was a bumper. You, mate, you're amazing. It was good. <laughs> I'm no, I'm you're just amazing. A, I'm just it was a like, <laughs> no, you're no, you're amazing because obviously I was there with obviously Brian yeah. Mitchell, who was, in the, who was in the last episode as well. And we, I thought, is that you? And it was sure enough, it was you. <laughs> On the Aye, it was good. And we we transformed like the place, you know. Oh, what I mean? beautiful! It was, it was great. You wouldn't have known it, and I guess the first time we we done it, uh, and I'd done it with David in the Bentley Suite just around the corner. Aye. So you didn't need to do anything. You didn't need to kind of plan for like sound systems, anything. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the Bentley Suite, dark, dingy club, excellent, great Aye. sound system. Then we took it because we're doing lunches down in the Sonic Terrace. A wee thing we me and a collective were doing. So Sonic Treasure shows the radio that right. I do, right? And, uh, and obviously Manifesto Bliss with, with David Keenan. Mm. So, but this with Terrace was like us collectively. So we thought, instead of waiting to try and get David Holmes back again, you know what I mean? We were doing a couple of things in the beer garden because we kind of opened that up doing it lunches. I know he's no lunches, I right, right. uh, old burnt barns. So we would kind of have sound system in and people were just coming in and loving it. The weather was no bad as well. But the big thing was, like, right, we need to keep us going, but so we'll move it up the stair. So that was the sort of kind of project. And the first one we done was like getting a sound system in, in, in the room up the stair, uh, which, you know, David's thing was, was let's book a shithole and do a shithole, right? Aye. But what he was, you've got lunches, it's full of character, you know what Aye. I mean? So, but basically we done it up the stair, it just looked like kind of a well, upstairs function in a pub, you know what I mean? Which is fair enough, right? Characters all doing stairs in that pub. It's it's immense, right? And people that run it, people that drink in it, that it's immense. So when we done it, the sound system was the really the best, and there was no decor or anything like that. So the the next start, as soon as we we're finished, David had really eyed a good kick in the arse up, you know what I mean? And he was like, right, you know, eh, what's going on, brother Joseph? You should, you know, fucking get a good sound system and all that, right? Okay. And eh, does it take much to date up? And I used to do gigs anyway, and I, I knew it didn't take much. So we invested in 20 dust sheets <laughs> and sheeted the full place out. Right. We get wee Stephen Gribbon, who does a, he does a lot of stuff, uh, projections. So we set up two projections, as you've seen, and he does a lot of kind of, he done a lot of like, stuff archived for Glasgow. Uh, I, and, I, spoke like, to, I spoke to Stephen that night. Spoke to I spoke to him that night, uh, and I made so, contact with him, and I thought, right, who's this guy? And he said, that's my artwork. This is artwork, aye. aye. So it was great. At first, the night before it, we got all set up, and we're like, right, and the sound system, we, we go to a sound system with a boy, 
uh, down south. He's from up here, but he stays in Duncan's lot after the, 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 that one. He went, you could have had my sound system. And we were like that. I went, you know, uh, no, we know. So we paid money and got that repaired. Which David Holmes had actually said, no, to do, invest the money. I'm not born about money. Cover their costs and stuff, but what you do is invest it into the, you know, the night. Aye. Which was awfully kind of him, you know. Aye. It's fucking very kind of him. Very kind. So, uh, aye, he done that and he loved coming and uh, it was great. So we go on that, right, pick David up and instead of going out and going and, you know, drinking before it and that, I went right straight to the place. He walked in and his jaw dropped and he was like, fucking hell, this is brilliant. You know, he's went, he smashed it. And I went, well, the decor smashed, right? It was like, the sound system is the up to be. You can kick your ass if it's right this time. But it was all good. It was Aye. great. You no, know? it was. So it was had a great just... time. And uh, the other thing I'll say as well is we got another couple of projects to run with. Uh, and uh, we'll get one in uh, the end of this month coming. Uh, again, just upstairs. It's a free party. Aye. People like to go. And Aye. it's like, now they're finished. You go at like 7 till 12. It's great for our age, aye, <laughs> you know. Aye. But we've got we've also got the manifesto bliss with David. Aye, Keenan. the manifesto bliss. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about aye, that. The poetry club, so that'll be good as well. One. So aye, all the things are all great. That's the nice and the good side of life right. as well. So all good. All so good, anyway, sense. thank you. Again yes, thank for you for having us. Invitation. And uh, thanks for inviting me with your yes. guest here. So the second, second guest, man. <laughs> oh, wait a second, this guy, man. Now this guy is so good looking, right? So good looking. That it's untrue, but he has had more <laughs> more bands from TikTok than Andrew Tate. He's that bad. Anyway, we're coming to Wee Wido. Wee Wido, welcome to Green Sunrise. Thank you very much for having me, man. Brilliant. Aye, uh, uh, we were on. So I, I spoke. We Wido, me and Wee Wido have been on this group chat. We were on a group chat today, and I didn't even know it was him. I've been watching his TikTok stuff right for for ages, and then you were commenting. <laughs> he was commenting on the, the WhatsApp group chat. Says, "How's all of that?" Because then I see your face done like that. He's talking about, and then they're posting your, all the boys are posting your videos, I right? Posting them and ah, he's brilliant. We wide, he's brilliant and all that. And I'm like, it's him there. And I'm like, all right, I don't realise. So I welcome you again, Sunrise. Thanks mate. very much, mate. Thank Thanks for coming on, aye. Not a problem. Brilliant. Uh, and the the big big one, right? Because you you were going to be the big one, right? Oh, but then somebody else came in, and I didn't realise, <laughs> didn't realise. So, who, who, who we're going to get him, right? So I'm last then. So aye. you were last. He, he was maybe thinking, you were last. You know you're playing, so I know, aye, aye. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so like I was late. It was maybe a game of five. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> we had a couple injuries. You would have still been last. I know, I know, I know. I and goals. But anyway, you know what I mean by that. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul John Dykes, man, uh, producer, uh, documentary producer, your own Scottish podcast, an award-winning podcast at that. Uh, obviously, writer, you've done you've done films as well, haven't you? I've done a doc, I've done, done a documentary. documentary. Yeah. Uh, and I just, I can't believe you're here, mate. Thank you so much for... No, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. I've been looking forward to this. Ah, uh, brilliant. And I love, I've seen you filtering into Twitter, into the Twitter. Aye, aye, so aye. Starting to I love your videos as social well. media platform. Aye. Ah, aye. So I'll, I've been following you for a while as well. And uh, from Axum, uh, even although we spoke about today, we're going to try and stay away from the football. But at the same time, when that sneaks in, it's <laughs> there's four Celtic fans in here, so I don't, <laughs> I don't think there's don't think there's any uh, worries with that. So I'm just so glad that you said you were going to come in, and I thought I had to jump on it straight away. So obviously you met Brian Mitchell, who again, yeah, aye, Brian, aye. Brian Mitchell met the Alan, it was Alan McGee night, wasn't it? It was Alan McGee, and just interestingly enough, McGee, I had to go and pick him up from the hotel that night. And he was like, you know, you've really promoted this well, my mate you'd, David you'd Holmes. Him up, yeah. Aye, 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 right, aye. He uh -huh. was at the uh, Radisson Blue, uh -huh. and I'm the worst driver in the world, right? But you know, <laughs> I was like, I'll go and pick him up. And he mentioned the David Holmes thing. He said, you know, David Holmes was up here, and he had seen one of the banners. We'd been aye. fly posting. I don't uh -huh. know, is that illegal? Anyway, we'd been fly posting. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> Holmes, actually, when we were sitting in the uh, in lunches, uh, that just downstairs, we had well, it's about five or six o'clock at night. He, McGee text him right, and was saying hey Homer are you playing here tonight you know and I thought I is McGee I don't know if he was up staying or what but I, there was posters all around the back of lunches as well Aye, we, we just McGee hammered stuff. it we just Aye. hammered it but he was impressed and there you go there's the link so that's, that's ah, amazing brilliant. Brilliant. Super brilliant. Brilliant. Aye, good. excellent good so thank you thank you the three years, obviously, and there is no one, two, or three years. The three years are all I, the I same. Think you've clearly stated <laughs> 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 there is. I'm going three. <laughs> Sorry. There is no one, two, or three. One, two, or three. <laughs> but, uh, so it's, it's all good. So thank you so much for this, boys. So what we're going to do? Talk about 
obviously a bit about yourselves. Uh, let's start with let's start with Wee Wee Idol, right? So Is me. that alright with that? That's what I've so, it, how did you get into the old TikTok stuff? Um, first, first of all, going to explain to me, you keep getting bands, man. What's for that about? I I get a bit personal sometimes, don't I? Or a lot of my bands, like I got when I get my first massive account band, so like. See kid. when you say personal, you don't you're not being cheeky, but you know, no really. No. You're just you're just kinda giving it back. Aye, 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 aye. I wouldn't so no, I've wouldn't never seen much negativity. It nah, just seems I, to be I don't I don't give back to MD who's no gave it to me in the same vein, if you know what I mean. So if they've got personal with me, then to me it's fair game. If they've just been cheeky to me, I'll just be cheeky back, funny and blah blah blah. And, it, and to be fair, the the ones that I'm just a wee bit cheeky, a wee bit funny, the other videos that they much better mm -hmm. but it's when you start getting really personal but when I get my first my first band on my my, my kind of account that was bigger than this one um, it was because I started attacking Trump fans no attacking that's, that's me but I just started slagging them and then <laughs> like they just came in their hordes and, and and I'm just like giving them it back and finding out all these stuff about random Americans who I've never met in my life and, and, and just nailing them and then was this hit name over there aye? Ah, well, aye, 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 aye. was it aye? aye just, that's it was, amazing it was one video Brilliant. I put it and then uh, I can't remember what the video was about, but it was something Trump done anyway, and I just I just threw it out and it just went wild. And then I threw it another <laughs> one after it about Ben Shapiro. And then um, literally it was like a clip of Ben Shapiro and then like four seconds of me. And I said something and, I, and it, that that went into the millions and and then that was it. Wow. All, the Americans just, <laughs> all, all the right wing Americans just coming for me and I was like, this is gonna be great. <laughs> and it lasted for about three months and then back then it used to be it used to get like six video bands. Before the banter account, right? Now it's only three, which isn't good for me, right? Obviously, because you no, know, like, even if you see my account, when you see my account now, it just says account warning underneath my name, right? Because it's like one ban and I'm going again and starting again, and that's so. If you've done, you've done the, you've probably done with the audio. You've got a backup account. Or you've aye, got aye, one, aye, two, three several, backup accounts. Several, I've so got, you've got get, several backup accounts. Ah, I've got like three backup accounts sitting in there. Um, two of them are sitting kind of dormant, no, no follows, but ready to go and I've got one that's sitting that so it's kind of slowly building up falls and people can find it and stuff like that and it's, it's a similar name to what I've got now. See when you've done your, your backup accounts right so what I'm, what I'm thinking so you've had a ban right mm -hmm. and then you've went straight to your other account but your other account is just like another 30,000 subscribers or was that a, was that another slow grower? No so the account I'm back on now because I, I left TikTok for about five months That's and, right and that account was the account I'm on now was up to about 12,500 and this was end of February, middle of February, but that, but that time. But I gave up TikTok. And I mean, I, I just totally just gave up with it. And my wee sister had started a business. I went, look, there's a there's a TikTok account with 12,500 followers. Just have it, delete all my videos. I went, just take it. And then she kind of didn't really know how to use it. So it wasn't really doing well for her. Right. And then I started this other account and I got banned and I just like sent a sister a message. And I'm like, what, are you using that account? I said, I've, I've kind of, Looked on, you've not really done anything for November, and she went, No, 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 I'm not using it. I'll use it for a wee while, trying to get my other account back. If I get it back, you can have this one back. The very first video I done on it, and it was arguing with this this English boy, um, it just went mental. And it just went for 12,500 right up to 25,000 space a day. I was like, right, She's not getting it back now, that's it. Because <laughs> 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 uh, you knew. And I got my other account back as well, and I had it back for three days. They appealed it and then the because I won the appeal on the video, they opened the account back up and then three days later they just banned the video again and shut my account down again. So and that was it done. This is my question, right? So if you've got haters out there, aye. Th that's it. They can just they can get you banned quite aye, easily. Well in a sense, I it, it used to be and it's not so much news, but what I've noticed is people can mass report their videos. And it used to be they could mass report a video and there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. But if they've mass, if hundred people, two hundred people went and report a video, right. TikTok will eventually go, right, there's also something wrong with us that we all know see we'll just we'll just get rid of it. No, there has to fall under all their different categories if it's hate speech or mm -hmm. anything like that. If you're talking about illegal products, so you can't silly things that like you can't vape on, on TikTok. If you're seen vaping on TikTok, That's right. it's a ban. Anything like that. So if they, so if I had a if I was vaping and and it was on there, somebody could go and report that. And they could mass report that video and they bother. Pull that down, and that's basically that. That's a red mark against you, and that's last for ninety days. Wow. So, so, so well.
But so I've, got, I've gone to the 26th of May and then that's me I can get start getting personal with people again. What, why is it vape? <laughs> why is it vape a thing? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. It's, see, to be fair, it's it's not something I would do on camera anyway uh -huh. because I TikTok, there's a lot of veins and I, I just I just wouldn't uh -huh. have it on it. Aye. See, same with like smoking or anything like that. I wouldn't, I just, I just wouldn't have it on because you don't know who's watching your videos uh -huh. and... I think they actually tell you, and when you open up your account on when you're doing TikTok, they say you, there's certain things you can't do. I think one thing they say you can't do, you can't <coughs> do lives and drive. So you can't put it on aye, and drive. Aye, 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 but aye, aye. you see people doing it. Aye, aye, aye. See, like you, you do your videos and driving, and I've seen people. Aye, but that's do, what I'm, I'm, I'm mine's on hands free, I, I know, right? I've, I've, I've seen people lose videos because of that. As and well. that's fine, but I, I think they'll lose it. I don't, but, I don't, but I'm I, think, it. I think you get lucky for the fact that. Right now you're a smaller account. Aye, so if you become start becoming a bigger fish, they'll, Aye. They'll, they'll, they'll Well, they see something. me doing so I'll do three minute videos, but I'll just put hands free on, press the button, and I'll be driving and I'll talk. Mm -hmm. So it's no no James Corden or anything like that, but it's like I'll just go right, let's bum my bun. But I, I'm all about, as you know anyway, right, how's your positivity? Let's get into this day, let's smash it and all that kind of stuff, right? But you're right, it's probably because of the fact that it's no that big. Aye, that's and, that's, 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 that's what it'll be and TikToks tend to go for bigger accounts to ban them. Hey, can I make an example? Aye. Oh, why did he get banned? Why, why is this? And then you open up another account and goes, oh, why did you get banned? Oh, because I've done this. And then right. the word starts spreading kind of thing for them. So then they let the people kind of spread the word that this is how you get banned and, and that's it. But it used to be as well, if you had a backup account and if and if TikTok knew you were the same account and they'd ban you, they would just ban you straight away. That ha right. happened to me twice, but it doesn't happen anymore. Well, I don't know why, right. but they just, they just stopped doing it. So you'll be next Scottish Andrew Tate? Well, definitely not. <laughs> de 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 definitely not. I might have the ball teed, but that's, that's about as far as it goes. No, no. No, I'm okay. So, uh, right, fair enough. Right, so, uh, Paul, let's... Man, you're, you're amazing, right? Because I'm obviously watching the Axum, but I can see the book, the first book that you ever wrote, right? The Quality Street, was it? Quality yeah, Quality Street Gun. I, can, I can't buy it. It's like 70, 70 cents. It's buy. mental. It's mental. It's bizarre. Sometimes I wish, because the, the second one's even rarer, and I just wish I'd kept a few boxes, you know, aye. for a rainy day. But aye. Aye, the minute they sell out, I, I'd, I'd rather not put them back into print. No, that's you know? it. No, so no, just, I get that. That's good. That's, aye, that's good. Keep them quite rare and sought after. So was that your first big thing? Was it the Quarter Street? It was, aye. Uh, and um, that was obviously... And I, gave them, I know we're not... But it's football. I don't mind talking about football as well. We've already said that. So this is a team, obviously, that after the Lisbon Lions. Yeah, aye. This uh, was like the nineteen seventies. So the Lions in the sixties were, you know, brow creamed hair and all that kind of prim and proper. And right. the seventies comes along, right? And it's completely different. You aye. know, even mm -hmm. the jerseys aye. with the floppy yep. collars and the hairs aye. grown over the years, which was a big thing, bizarrely yep. enough. But yeah. Uh, but the reason I did it was um, I come from the villages in Fife, right. just wee mining villages. You know. Um, country bumpkin and uh, one of the players from the quality street gang was from the same village as me and you know his big brothers worked with my dad down the pits and all that right so he, he was an intriguing character very mysterious character because oh. he was uh, george conley aye, um, right. aye, aye. and george was like extremely talented but he came from a background where you know i come into glasgow and i, I can see it you know people have got a bit of gallusness about them aye. whereas he was a big shy lad quite vulnerable and he suffered mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So growing up, we all knew about him. Like I played for the boys club in Valleyfield and all his mates were the coaches and they used right. to tell us about George. But the mysterious thing about him is he just quit. He just quit the game, 26 year old. He'd played in a European Cup final, 1970. Mm -hmm. He'd won Scotland's player of the year. He was meant to be going to the World Cup in 74, but he broke his ankle. Just quit. He just that, quit? Just quit. Well, yeah, ah, yeah, and that was it, 26 year old, you know, George. So growing up, it just, there was an airy mystique around this one guy mm -hmm. and I always just knew I was going to write a book about it, you know? Right. Um, but I wanted it to be a bit of a life tale. It could be like, there's 19 guys in the story, but it could be 19 guys that started the school, you know, or it could be 19 uh, guys that went anywhere. Yeah. What happens to them? Some of them will reach the top, some of them will fall by the wayside. Right. You know, there'll be <clears throat> success, triumph, and a wee bit of tragedy. And that's what it was. That was what the story was, you know? So... <clears throat> What was your first big thing? Would that be your first big thing going in? So what got you, I suppose the question would be, what got you into that, what got you into that kind of line of work? Yeah, I was, I mean, I've had what was probably best described as an eclectic kind of work uh, career, uh, just moving from thing to thing, you know, right. getting bored and moving on and all that. Right. But I always had this, you know, interest in writing and art and 
So I always just did it just to be fun, you know. Aye. But then my big brother was and is very musical, always in bands, still in bands. And um, so I used to like do this thing where I would write reviews just so I could get free tickets and you know Aye. CDs at the time <laughs> sent through the through the post. It was just a it was just a blag, and then you did a wee review, and then that was it. And I, I kind of did that, and I thought you know I'd want to do something a wee bit more substantial. And I didn't know I love my music, but I don't know music is kind of like intrinsically as I know football. Right. So I decided there's got to be a Celtic book, you know. Yes. But the thing is, I, I did it with no plan. You know, I just did it for the fun of it. I didn't have a publishing deal. I had no idea what to do in terms of getting it published. I just did it. And I think I, I read a lot of biographies, autobiographies, and like, a lot of musicians, it's like they're writing songs in their bedroom. They don't know where they're going to go. And that's the Aye. best way to do it. Yeah. Because you're not selling out. You're not doing it because you're trying to impress somebody. Yeah. You're just doing it to be kind of true to yourself. I did get a publishing deal, but you know that's just the way it, way it kind of worked. Yeah. I was quite lucky, Aye. but um, I just done it to please myself. And I thought, right, how do I start this? Who should I speak to first? I'll just try and get Danny McGrain. Try and get Danny McGrain, <laughs> and he said, "Aye," and it just it just went like that. Aye, so oh, right. just <laughs> go to the very top. Try and get Danny, <laughs> and it just went from there. It was great. Wait, if you foot the bottom. Aye, that, that's brilliant, man. Uh, that is excellent. Uh, and it's excellent. It's I didn't know you wrote the Quality Street. Yeah, I read it. You know the, the strange thing about that? It, there was a picture, right? And it was like this group of guys, and they're all lining up for a wee game of, uh, over in Italy. It was a mm -hmm. like an under nineteen tournament, and uh, Dalglish was so young he didn't even get a game, so he wasn't in the picture. But Macari was in the picture. Danny was in the picture. Pre beard, Danny McGrain. Right, aye, nice. aye. And I thought, right, there's the eleven guys. I'm going to track them down, and I'm going to interview them write their story and see where it goes. But there was a guy in there with a great head of hair, just phenomenal kind of film star looks. I had no idea who he was and I love my history. So I was like, who is this guy? So I met Danny, he says, who is he? He told me his name. I had no idea who he was, where to find him. Um, he goes, oh, you know, he used to be working at estate agents in Dumbartonshire or something. And I was just like on it, just focused like to the, the obsessed level. I need to find this guy. He was the only guy I couldn't find. And when I finally did find him, I'd put out all these requests. Oh, his brother works in a school, right? Email the school, all that stuff. Kind of stalked him, right? Aye, of course. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, Sunday night, one night, the mobile goes, and of course the wife's like, who's phoning you on a Sunday night? Unknown number. I better answer it, eh? And it's this, this fella, his name was John Murray. And it was strange because I knew there was something up. He was like, ah, you try to find me. And I was like, aye, I'd love to speak to you. What are you doing? I'm um, writing this book called The Quality Street Gang. About all us, I said, Aye, who's going to read that? You know, ah, wow. and I'm like, Well, you know, we'll see. Mm -hmm. He says, I'll tell you what, I'll speak to you. Uh, meet me, and he was very specific. Meet me on Friday morning at Tinderbox in such and such a street in Glasgow. And I was like, All right, got a day off my work, went through, and it was one of the ones you're sitting in the morning thinking, He's a guy that never kicked a ball for Celtic, mm. so it could be like a bit of a, a aye, damp squib. Aye, aye. You know, what am I going to get? But it changed my life. That meeting changed my entire <coughs> Is life. Is that right? Aye, because he, um, John, and I'm still friends with him now. He's a lot older than me, but um, he is one of the major shareholders at Celtic. <clears throat> he says, the reason I wanted to meet you is I was speaking to uh, Peter on Thursday, Peter Lowell. Right. And, I, and it just so happens that the Quality Street gang was Peter's team. That was the team that he loved. He fell in love with Dalgish mm -hmm. and all that. He said, Celtic, I want to publish a book. And that was it. Oh, brilliant. So it's it's just Celtic publisher then, yeah. Celtic publisher. Aye. 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 Okay. And I'm sitting thinking, all the millions of really talented writers, because I don't think I'm a talented writer, I just like the research and interviews, that's my thing. And all the people that have written brilliant books and manuscripts that never ever got a deal. Aye, and I'm just lucky. Aye, just mm -hmm. moment of luck, you know what I mean? <coughs> it's moment. just the right, right moment. It's just there, isn't it? Just that grasp it. Be. Exactly. Aye. Some people have happened to that. John Murray, you never know, and you might not have got him, but... It's just there at that just timing, time. just that moment. Aye. Timing's perfect. It's yeah. amazing that, isn't it? Aye. That's brilliant. What was, what was the second book? <coughs> Sorry, Paul, if you don't know. Uh, asking. I did uh, the biography of Neely Mocking. Neely Mocking. Celtic Smiller. Right, okay. Aye. And what happened with that one is the publishers went bust, right? So they only printed 500 copies. So mm -hmm. you, you can't buy a, a copy of this book. Right. Anywhere, I've got one. I've got one copy and. When you see it on Amazon, the prices are just. I, 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 it's it's not right. Obviously, it wasn't right because I, I actually thought I'd read the book, but it wasn't. It was the I think it was the Jimmy McGrory one, the Jimmy McGrory book. But I think obviously that was referenced Neil Mott, and I was like, oh, I think I read that book. But obviously, mm. I couldn't have. It's it, it's actually quite frustrating because 
I done a, a kind of dual thing, so I done the documentary and the book. Mm -hmm. So there was things in the film that that weren't in the book and vice versa. Right. Um, and the plan was to finally do an updated version and everything, but. As I say, the publisher went um, belly up, and right. you know it became a real rarity. But I quite like that as well. Aye. People are always no, saying, "Can good. I get that book?" No chance. Aye. It's not happening. Aye, <laughs> brilliant. That's, that's class. That's brilliant. brilliant. That's like a, a rare bit of vinyl into it. Aye, and stuff, aye. You know, exactly. Aye. And, aye. and, and then brilliant. that there was a there was an element of luck in that as well, Joe, because mm -hmm. I was at the uh, launch of the Quality Street Gang. And the only reason I did a launch at Celtic Park so I could walk in the front door and just pretend for a moment that I maybe played for Celtic or something. <laughs> and I went in and uh, there was a there was a guy who was not really part of the team. He came in a wee bit later, but he was mentioned in the book. And I I, I couldn't speak to him because he had passed away tragically, but I spoke to his best mate. So I invited everybody that contributed to the book to the launch. And the, the guy's name sadly passed away since as well, John Sludden. So he turned up for the boot launch and he brought his cousin. Who's his cousin? Neely Mocking Jr. And that's Jesus how I met Neely. Christ, and Neely was like talking about his dad's book that so many people have oh, wow. promised to do it. It's not happened. And I've done it, you know. So everything just seemed to fall into place. That's synchronicity. It's totally. that just, it just, it's uh, there, you know what I mean? It's that. Me and Keenan talk about that all the time. But, you know what I mean? It's like, we don't even ask what we're doing. And then we turn and go, how'd that happen? And it's, uh, it's just happened. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just there. It's I don't know what it is, but that's that's that's, that's brilliant. It's great. And it's again, I'm, I'm pally them uh, to this day. So you're mm -hmm. meeting people that you, you just kind of ah, yeah, click with as well. Aye, you know, aye, 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 it's aye, it's aye, aye, aye. So some proper friendships that have come out of it is, are great. That's the best. Ah, that that's brilliant. I'm <clears throat> obviously personally doing doing this. I'm meeting people that I would never have expected to meet, and I think. <clears throat> Obviously, I was speaking about the boy, the Glasgow podcast, the guy, uh, I was talking to him when he first came out, and I'm like, that, right, what's it, what's it all about? And he's like, you're doing brilliant, you're doing brilliant, and I'm like, I'm not doing anything, I'm just <laughs> asking people to do it, and it's like, meeting people like yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, everybody's got a story, as we, we spoke about that, right, mm -hmm. got a beautiful story, so what we want to do is, we want to talk about Stress Awareness Month, and uh, I'm being serious. I didn't actually know there was a stress awareness month. Until you messaged me, I no, 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 no. not a clue myself. Supposedly it's been it's been a thing since 1992 when I'm doing my mm -hmm. kind of research for it. And I think it's based some American company that done it right. And it's like, what's happening? I, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't ever hear it. I feel it seems like it's one of the things in this day and age it should be more publicised. Yeah, just just because mental health in the last five years is. The way we speak about it is just grown and grown and yeah. grown. Do you no. think it's one of the things that they would yeah, I mean, get the forefront of things? Uh, as as a epidemic proportions of what we're going through, yeah, I think, with, the, so, with yeah. the mental health. So it was actually Brian Mitchell that says, because he's a writer, he's fucking, he's a Green Sunrise podcast writer, and he's telling me, this is what we can do. And I'm like, as, as well as I'm obviously involved, but he's like, no, this is what you want to talk about this. It was more so about the man versus fat, the five sides, that Brian, he loves it. Uh, and obviously from playing football, trying to lose weight and all that kind of, right. that must look after, looks after your stress 100%. Definitely. So I'm, I'm just trying to think, this relating back to your books from obviously that time, do you think, it's quite a hard question, but do you think the stress, stresses back then were less than what they are now? Or do you think, is it just the same, but just in a different colour? Is a different kind of... I think the biggest issue is um, they didn't know how to deal with it. So even if it wasn't as kind of high yes. intensity stress, mm -hmm. George is a classic example. Now, George, he's still with us, thankfully. Um, he has had a battle with alcoholism. Mm -hmm. But that started with, with um, stress. It, yep. it started with mental health issues. Never diagnosed as a young man. I mean, who walks away at the age of 26 at the peak of his powers? You know, he could have played anywhere in the world. No. Uh, the Scottish Beckenbauer. That, that's that's right. a mm -hmm. But there was not the, the kind of set up at a football club anywhere, not just at Celtic, anywhere. It was just like, grow up, you know, grow a set of boys, no, get out there, play right. football. And that, that's what it was. And I mean, his brothers were doing the pits with, with my dad, and it would, the attitude would have been the same doing the pit. You imagine doing a shift in there, 12-hour mm -hmm. shift, and say, oh, you know, I'm not feeling that great. What's wrong with you, like? Because it's invisible. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's ah, no so, way. No. And that still exists like no. today. And it does. No, right. no, no way it did then, but no, nowadays if you say that to somebody, there's, there's oh, a life, life going on that. you straight, straight away, you know what I mean? But there's still that, there still is that kind of, 
attitude with people. It's mm-hmm. like just just go home, especially amongst guys, which is mm-hmm. is wild because like, women have always. It's what they say. Women always have women, but guys don't have guys to, to talk to about it because it's just just man up and go home with it. Yeah. So it's always been that way, and probably will be for for years to come until it becomes aye something that we talk about a I lot think, more regularly. I think with the stress, what you said the, the alcoholism comes in for that, right? No, I, I I don't mind saying in my podcast I lost my dad to stress and alcohol issues, and I think that that really sticks with me. So I think that's that's always at the base of green sunrise if you like the whole point of like let's connect with people let's get out there let's make sure that people are talking about it because you just say that man guys still find it hard to to talk Mm -hmm. so but you also have said Paul about the fact that well there's more we've got more uh, more things to fall back on as we know a lot more Mm. and so we've got a lot lot more defence mechanisms that we can use What, what do you do yourself so I will always ask everybody about that. Mm-hmm. So when you're stressed out, what, what is your thing you go to? What, what would you say, George? Well, I, I think there's a vicious circle in it as well. Stress and anxiety. Yep. Uh, yes. And if you like a beer and you like a drink, yep. sometimes you're stressed, you end up going and go to the pub. Yep. And, it, and it's true or else oh, you get a couple right. of beers, right? And before you know it, you've, you're bringing the anxiety back home to the next day because you mm. feel like shit or you yep. feel and you're like, right, can I deal with this? So you're bringing the stress on to yourself again. And I think in that sort of way is, uh, you know, is trying to just kind of cut to a level of like kind of going right, you know, trying to stop that. And it's, it's diff- that is difficult. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd, from Christmas there, I hadn't had a drink till well into February. Even I think that, you know, and then it was here and then it was my birthday. And then it was, I think it was, a, again, back to football, but it was a, the cup final. I think it was the first drink I'd had, right? Aye. I went, oh, I'll have a beer because we'd won, right? And then it was like, oh, and I, I used to, I used to love like recording shows, and then put my headphones on, get into the crow, and I'll have a beer, right? And then just sit with it in my own thing. But then again, I do a lot of writing as well, right? Uh, so it's kind of that kind of is good. But could I go to the pub, like, and write without enjoying a few pints mm-hmm. as well, you know? And and then it's okay coming up the road, but I the stress. I mean, I wouldn't even go, more mer- so with my work sort of thing, like meeting sort of, I know so much deadlines, but dealing dealing with people, mm-hmm. people are stressful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People stress you. Oh, I yeah. Know. People give you anxiety, you know yep. what I mean? Uh, in the way they can talk to you, the way their attitude to you, uh, you know, and it's like, I don't know, but you're right, there is, there is, we're guys and the thing is, it's as difficult because who, who can we talk to and stuff like that? There will be more nowadays, but I still feel... I work obviously in the building game, but in sites and stuff like that as well. That's and you're right, it's like, Aye. and it is like the pits as you're saying, it's like, fuck's sake, man up. Aye. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Aye, come on, aye, aye, aye. See, when we were your age, man, we were out having dogs. And I've noticed a lot <clears throat> more of days now, we did go and we did go clubbing and we did uh, go for the Friday to the Sunday and we did get up in the Monday and I still went to work and never missed a day or missed a few days here and there but we're still on it right and we had to just go on mate and we did go on mate right but I think there's also new the, I've seen too many but like, in one of the fans uh, pages uh, I was on uh, in our own chat there was a well-being page for young guys and it was very good because there was a lot of boys that, that we know in the group the Green Brigade did do a lot have, has done a lot yeah. for mental awareness and stuff like ah, that as well, have. right? They've done a, a, a great deal. You know, they promote it really well as well. Hand out leaflets, phone numbers. Ah, right, so they're, act, they're proactive on it. But yeah. I've seen too many young guys as well. I mean, and I'm, you know, we all, we all done what we've done, right? Maybe it was easy in our days or uh, psychedelics and stuff, right? But they're hitting that, that mad green smoke and they're putting so much Charlie up their nose, Why right? That it's like? unreal. Yeah. Then what's happening is it's the wee guy that they're getting it after. He's gone. Where's my? I need the money there, right? And then he's got somebody after him. They can't pay that, and they're stressed, and anxiety, and half it is as well. See if they just take the fat off the, the gas sometimes Aye. and go. Do you know what? I'm going to sit in the house, get a Chinese or an Indian, watch some shite TV. Aye. Right? You're not missing anything when you're out. Aye. Their whole fear is is of missing something. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. that whole thing as well. But there was well a well being chat. I've never seen so many people now on antidepressants oh, as well. It's, it's shocking. Um, Aye. So is there enough out there for it? 
you know, to deal with or are we just scared to talk about it and put our, you know, you know, put our cards on the table I, with it. And I go, suppose I need to talk to somebody here. I, 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 I think that's a I'm thing. I'm speaking to. I've been speaking to. We've been giving names, obviously, because I sort of speak to people for the AA, right? Mm -hmm. The alcoholics and anonymous. No, they say in the AA you've got the twelve steps, but if you don't do the twelve steps, you could do eleven of those steps, mm -hmm. but you will still, you're still obviously going to be an alcoholic, right? Mm -hmm. But you could do eleven of those steps and you'd be all right. But if you can't get that, if you can't master that twelve step and completely do the steps, then you're always going to be the same, right? Oh, yeah. And we all, I think we all know somebody who's been in the A or, or mm -hmm. is in the A. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, and again, it's, alcohol is, I've always said alcohol is the biggest killer in Scotland. The biggest, aye. Uh, aye, aye, I think. But again, we talk, I talk about suicide a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's real, it's, it's, it's here. Uh, somebody told me today, one of my, my brothers, if you want to call him my brothers, uh, told me what he'd lost a, a party to suicide yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I'm like that. You're joking, my man. I was up to see my mother and she's gone. And as soon as we walk, we walk in, my boys are up walking, and I know she thinks, and that's a thing in her head, because she says, "What do you make of that boy?" It was a uh, was found in Paisley just recently, mm. just just there, you know, aye. the last few days. Aye, aye, aye. And she's like, "It's just sickening every time you pick a newspaper or you know, they'll still maybe the papers or own the news, and it's some boys there or they're looking for this boy, and that, and it is a big thing, you aye, know, aye, aye. and it is a male." It's a really sad way. Like I'm not saying during COVID he, <clears throat> he he took his own life. Was, wasn't he like a, a close pal? But it was somebody I worked with, and then somebody who I'd have a beer with if he was in the pub or whatever. And, and he took his own life. And there was a story behind it. I'm not, I'm not going to the story, but of course. the the story basically led him to date because he couldn't talk about it because he was ashamed of why he was feeling the way he was feeling it, and ended up taking his own life and like. The boy was loved by everybody, and I mean everybody. His, his funeral had like over three thousand people at it, and this was during COVID, and it was all the streets were lined and, and everything. And wow. and out of the three thousand people, he couldn't he, couldn't he speak to a single one of them, and thought taking his life was the best option. And you're like, it's just crazy, man. So what, what would so, so what, what would what would I say to you, Paul? What would you say is your your out? How do you how do you cope with stressful situations? The the first thing. Because like what you're saying there, it's so like heartbreakingly sad because right. every one of the 3,000 people would have spoken to him. Oh, of course, I. The first thing I think is identify that it's there, yep. right? Like if you're feeling, I, I remember uh, speaking to uh, somebody who, I know that it's a cliche, they call it the black dog, don't they? And, mm -hmm. and just identifying, right, I know why I'm feeling like this. And then, then having some kind of way of dealing with it. Yeah. And that's going to be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think exercise is absolutely mm -hmm. key. There was a thing, it was like, uh, and by the way, I'm not getting enough of it, as you can maybe tell. <laughs> um, but I think uh, we done a, we done a, we almost done a really, really good interview with Stan Collymore. I'm all, I, like, people interest me. Like, I, yeah. as I said before, I'm not a great writer. I've just got really good editors, right? But I love um, interviewing. So I can get the, the content, I can get all the, all the meat right. yeah. and then just let somebody be quite creative with, with the edit inside of it. Yeah. Uh, so smoking mirrors, by the way. Right? So, <laughs> um, as I said to you before, I'd love to speak to Roy Keane. And then Stan Collymore or somebody that's always interested me just because he's had his battles. Oh, yeah, and yeah. There's perceptions about Stan him. And he, he's so, like, you know, opinionated. <coughs> he's great, he's got yeah. an opinion. Um and so there was a thing he was on Twitter or whatever going on about, oh, you know what, bucket list, Celtic European game. And I was like, I've got a spare ticket. I'm just going to ask him if he wants to come up, right? So um, I DM'd him. I was like, listen, if you want to come up to the game, we've got a spare ticket, Lazio, right? You can come up to the game. And he agreed, right? So I, I did that, sent a message, went to my bed, woke up the next day and my Twitter had went mad because he had tweeted out to whatever he's following us. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm going up to... Watch the game with a Celtic state of mind, right? Yes. Right? And he uh, did all that. I think he said yes as well. Uh, <laughs> yes. Did, did all that. Did all that. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. So then he messages me. He goes, Paul, can I thank you enough? Listen, see when I'm up, you want to do anything? I was like, we'll do this interview. Um, and I think it was like a day or two before the game, he just messaged me and said, mate, I can't do it. And he explained why. Right, okay. And, and when you see now what he's doing on Twitter, it's exercise. You seen it? He's on no, the treadmill. No, no, no I've actually not seen him for a while. Unreal. And it's like, he just, he almost punishes himself through exercise, but he mm -hmm. knows that it's going to 
give him enough endorphins yeah. and the chemical balance and everything will get back. He says in November I couldn't get out of my bed, but now this is what I'm doing, you know. So exercise, I just think it's absolutely, Aye. it's massive. Yeah, exercise is massive. I, I, I would always go try and try and run. Now I was I like like running. I'm now <coughs> playing fives every, every Tuesday. And it's like right, that's my bit now. I've done my I've done my bit, but I'm trying to do more. So I do a lot of walking when I'm at work mm -hmm. if I can do that. But you're right, exercise is massive. See, see where you stay, see where your house is, Aye. see the hill. Aye. Right, I was getting up and doing that 10 times. Aye. And then I started jogging it. That's and then right. I was running it. And then I, I started running on the flat and I felt like, this is how the Lisbon lines were so good, right? Aye. Because the train did it sea mill. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the sand, right? And I seen I ran in the flat. I was, I felt it was the best. I, like, I dropped keys like, off at the old house. Aye. Came down, I was going to Carcassonne uh, for a week's holiday and I never get back into it again. That was it, because two weeks old, he was just, that was back to the debauchery, you know Aye. what I mean? But running up that hill, you see them doing it. Aye. And, but see, see the thought, thought of doing it, having to do it. I mean, that's, it's a 12, 12 degree angle on it, right? It's it's probably about 100 metres up. And you see them get out Aye, that, yeah, that gym out training, running up and down, right? Bus, and it's, it's, it's brutal. <laughs> walking it is brutal, but I've done a lot of hill walking, so I was like, right, this is good, you know? And, uh, and I started jogging it, and I started running it. And I was sick at the top of it and stuff. Aye. But see, when I came back down and uh, get into the house, it was like, that was brilliant. Aye. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the best. Yeah. That and being, that and a sober mind, I think, is, a, is yes. a, the healthiest state. Them, right? you yeah, can sobriety have, think, of, you know I mean? sobriety obviously. Is. And my hat's off to seeing, I see, I know loads of mates and I see boys that are, are like, that's me five year. That's me that. Does you see if you're see if you're a month, that's great. You know what I mean? I think no. you know, it's to be applauded. It's you know what I mean? If you're one of these guys who drink three and four nights a week or, or more, and then a month's massive or, or even two weeks is massive, man. Yeah. I, I, well, was, like, I was as you were saying, I was I was on building sites and <clears throat> still am and I was uh, drinking all the time and sniffing gear when I'm on site and, and going mental and then I had my my second kid and I was like, Do you know what, I, I need to stop. I was going wild and I, I ended up just, I, I cut off everything and I was three year without touching anything and, and I never done it because I, I didn't, I, I didn't have a problem with the drink because I knew like when I went, like, I'm going to stop, I stopped mm -hmm. and it wasn't like, it, was, it wasn't like a gradual thing, it was, it was just like, that's me, I'm done and then I took three years, drink for I went there to, as I was saying earlier, I went to Bermuda to work, everybody around about me drinking every night and I was like, nah, just, Done it, so I done the whole seven months in Bermuda. I never touched a single drink the whole time I was there, and then I came back here and that. And then now I'll have I think maybe three, four times a year if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. But just you're right. See, just That's drink, tremendous. man. It just it just drives you insane, Aye. man. Aye. And especially I mean, whatever stresses you. But at the time it was like me had my first child and I had my first child. Just uh, nothing was working in the house and wanted to go and the, the exercise and all of it's come into because that's when I the same time I was working. Um, when I had my first when I was working in the Hilton in the, the gym I was just hitting the gym every day and before either before my shift or after my shift whenever my shift was and feeling brilliant but still hitting the gym and getting home and having six beers before I go to my bed and mm -hmm. it's just wild man but mm -hmm. you, were, you were kind of fighting two evils and it was mental but cutting the drink out was the best thing I've ever done and drinking when I want to rather than just because I, know, just never, because I, I can or whatever you know what I mean I, it's, I, it certainly makes everything a lot easier I, I, Aye. Right, we'll, <coughs> we'll take a wee break. We'll take a wee break and we'll come back for the second half and uh, we will carry on. Right, boys? <coughs> How's it going Thank on? Thank you. Perfect. Huh? It's all right, Thanks. isn't it? It's, uh, like I say, it's like I've got, I say to you, <coughs> you've got 30 odd points that you're kind of doing. Chat, chat, chat GPT, you're like, right, and it gives you this, like, we'll talk about that. So we've not done any of that. We've just, it's all personal and stuff that we know about, I suppose. And I find your books. No, Aye. that's tremendous. Perfect. See the thing there, you're talking about the questions and that. <coughs> I mean, um, I got this interview with Neil Lennon. This was, he was at the Hibs actually at the time. And it was a big live event. And I'm, oh man, talk about stress. Different kind of stress, like putting yourself under a bit of stress to mm. make sure that you're prepared kind of Aye. thing. And I remember going into that and I had 60 questions for him, 60. I was like, start his career right through to the end. I must have asked him five questions that night. Is that right? It's just, it's just a big just, isn't it? Because you don't know chat. what their answer's going to be, and then you don't know how it's, how it's going to be for there. I met Neil Lennon in <coughs> a pub in West End. It was actually, it was still with uh, the separate mob. What are you? Uh, and it was, the, it was the time when there was the two, two week breaks for the international break or something like that. And before they played, I think it was after they played my night tip. 
and they were going to play the second leg, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was talk, he was talking about uh, uh, how how good he was doing with this team and all that. And then it was after the magnetic game he got sacked. Bizarre. So bizarre. That was, bizarre. That was probably one of their best games. I don't know. Aye. Aye. Like, they were amazing. They were outstanding. They almost sneaked something. Do you know what I mean? It was like, well, that can actually do that. He'll be back, you know what I mean. Aye. He'll, he'll. I think he'll be back in the, the Scottish game. I just aye, don't I know so well, where because I thought Celtic and Hibs that was the two jobs that <laughs> suited him. He'll not take. He'll not take half. <laughs> no, he's just waiting for another green and white team to come up. And that's all he does, isn't it? Aye, <laughs> aye, aye, aye. You know, <laughs> I quite fancy Queens Park, but they've gone off the boil. If they were to get promoted, I think Coyle would get headhunted, and uh, aye, aye, because aye. they really hockey's association with uh-huh. Queens Park. And they're, that's him and Lenny are big are they, are they sitting there, the new Queen's Park, right? Are they, Aye, they were on? sitting first. They were four points ahead, but Dundee just went on a They've seen it great run. run they? Aye. 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 I hope they get through, but I mean, if they were to face somebody like Ross County in a playoff, that's, they're no winning that. They're no winning that. No, no, no. That's the we, thing we, we Nick, Nicholas McAllister, he's at uh, Air. Right. He's with Air United. He was at Queen's Park. And then he was at, ah, he was, and then he was, he was Air. But he was a... Uh, He's, they were doing well, and then they just seemed to kind of like the, the airs went out them a bit. <laughs> they had, aye, they looked <laughs> as though they were exactly. Guy. And then the uh, Park Thistle started coming. <coughs> it's a great up league, as well, aye, brilliant aye. league. Aye. Aye, good league, man. Aye. 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 Talked to a boy today, and he's he's from down south, and he's he's got a flat in Mary Hill, and he's just like, oh, I started just getting like the Thistle games, just when I can, you know what I mean? Just he's like that. I was, I think he would maybe go to Celtic or whatever anyway, but he was like. Just just there, just if I'd get a season ticket, he went, I might end up working on it. So I could walk down the road if I'm not working or you know, and just do ah, something and just go in. You know, I mean, ah, yes, yeah, you know, I suppose I like that kind of Aye. supporting the local community. Way, that oh, way, you know, don't get me doing that in Dunfermline. Is that where you stay, mate? Do you do Fairland? Aye, aye. I'm from Dunfermline too. Aye, aye. That's where I stay, aye. I've, I've only been there for July. Well, in and out for about April and then moved in officially in July with my oh. so yeah. Are you from here originally? Uh, aye, I'm from Barhead. Are you from Barhead? Aye, uh, yeah, right, yeah, aye. 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 aye, aye, I was an athlete boy, aye. Well, the boys that started Robert Dub, uh, Big Martin McKay and Alan Gray, they were all, they were all Barhead aye, boys. Aye, aye. We used to kind of Barhead and Paisley, that was where we, we used to go. Paisley more than anything, Club aye, 69. Aye. That was our, our haunt. Because Glasgow was fucking up the same arse you know what I mean you know, only you in one week and then fucking Aye. sack you next <laughs> and, uh, and to be honest we ran the best the club six times incredible Paisley uh, for music you know what I mean it was like all underground the electronic the best it was like fucking, Aye. Uh, underground resistance and stuff like that Detroit amazing stuff obviously weather all know they were all there as well so Aye. that was great Aye, the boys that ran that, the main guys were all bored. They were bad. Aye, aye. Paisley shows you. Hey, well, guys, so I'm just looking for the, the 30 points. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, you sent us on the day, didn't you? I don't worry about it. So, what we'll do is maybe talk about the impact, the impact of stress on relationships. And I know we don't want to talk about relationships, but we can talk about the impact of stress on relationships and maybe obviously family and friends and colleagues. Mm. Uh, talk about that. So much. Right, stuff came to mind, don't it? Um, any need to talk? I'm alright. Right. Good, I'm good. All good to go. Right, well, <coughs> it's rolling anyway, we'll just kick it off. Mm-hmm. Welcome back to part two. Uh, of stress awareness again. We are with Paul John Dykes. Thank you so much again. Brother Joe and we widow TikTok star sensation. Right, we're going to talk about more stress stuff, right? Uh, now we don't want to get personal about relationships, but the impact <clears throat> that stress has on our relationships with our family, friends, obviously uh, our kids as well, and uh, our colleagues. So does any, anybody get anything to say on that? Obviously the stress that we have with, with our family and friends as well. I suppose one thing I'd, I would like to say is, it's funny, I can be really good in my job, right? I can be really, in the, like, I was a deputy manager and I was, I was quite good at being the manager and, and quite good at running an office of, uh, of guys, grown men, going, right, this is what's happening. No, you're doing this, doing that wrong and controlling things, mm-hmm. right? 
And then I'd go up the road, <laughs> right? And my boy or, or my girl would say something. And I'd bah! and I would scream. Not no scream, but I would have like, I'd give him a hard time. And then I'd realise, it's all right, I was dead. I was, came out, came out of nowhere. Aye. So it was like, I've, I've went from being totally, aye, I'm sorted and work. I can sort this, no problems. But then as soon as like my partner, or my girlfriend would say something, or the one of the kids would, I'm like, and, I, and I would roar at them. And then I'd realise, oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> What were we doing that for? Mm -hmm. So, have you ever came across that where you've been a cool as cool as beans all that day, and oh, then wow. somebody says something, and you just you just go off in it? I what a time! My boy. <laughs> I'm, see, I'm like my missus says to me, I'm quite regimented, so I finish work and I come home, and every day when I get home, the same every day. See, as soon as something happens, it throws me off for that. Oh man, I, I blow my top, man, and I don't know why, and then. I'll sit and I'll, I'll lie in my bed and I'm like, why, why have I done that, man? Aye. I'm such, such an idiot. And I mean, like, I'll, I'll come home, through the door, I won't even look at the living room, right up the stairs, bag down, shower, go in, sit in the room, do whatever I need to do on my phone. Usually throw a TikTok up. Usually you'll see sitting in my bed. That's where I always am. Right after I shower, sit in my bed, I'll throw one up. And if anything happens between that period of time, like, Aiden, her, her boy being on his game and shouting, man, I'm just like, going to shut up, man. Aye. You know, I just, just simplest wee thing man just Aye. sets me off and but I'm I'm not happy I'm quite regimented in the way I get out of bed and and if something throws it off I, I I go mental but yeah if I go into work I'm just like hey that's fine and I can I can I'm fine Aye, I'm you can deal with it. Aye. but then same as usual saying look managers coming in and my gaffer no so much this job but other jobs I've been on gaffer will get all the boys and they hang me and like this is what has to be done today but I've already got it in my head but as I'm doing that day and if he's telling me something different I'm just going that's that's not what's happening <laughs> A rebel. I'm doing what I've had in my head that I was coming out today for yesterday, and until that's done, nothing, nothing you've asked me today is getting funny. Isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, you're honest, I'm, I'm a duck fitter, so it's like, whatever, I'll be fitting a bit of duck, and he'll be like, right, well, we need you down here to go and do this thing, and I'm like, no, mm, that right, bit of duck upstairs. <laughs> I'm not doing it, he's done right, in my right. head, and I'm not even saying to him, like, I'm going to go and do that, I'm just, I'll just go and do it, and then he'll come up and go, what are you doing this for? Ah, it needs finished. Aye, but that needs, no, no, no. This, this needs to finish first. I but we're getting it doesn't matter. This is what ah, I've got right. my head down and I need to get it done. I've always been that way. Wow. But then I, I don't know what, like, oh, I've got ADHD, right? So I don't know if it just comes for that. It's just like, this This is what needs done before I move on to like, the next part of it. Ah, where you am complete, but it's ah, a good thing. Because if that's, if that's not done, that's all I think about all day, man. Mm -hmm. It's just like, that. that's not finished. And then a gaffer will come up to me. Even if I go and do the other thing, they'll come up to me and go, Blah blah blah, blah 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 upstairs. I will deal with that. But do you want me to go and do it? No, just right. Aye, and then you... I'll see him, and it could be ten minutes later. But it's MD doing that yet? <laughs> it's like no, you've even just asked me about it. Ah, because you've got it's it done, man. You, ah, you've aye. got it in your head that no, it's like that, you say, it's regimented. That, that, aye, it's mm -hmm. just just everything's in, in my head. It's always all the time. Just everything's in a list. Just, wow, just needs done. Constantly. I've noticed. I suppose we all notice if we've been on our phones and somebody asks you to do something. And it's, no, hold on a minute, I'm on my phone. But I've noticed when, when my kids have went for <laughs> innocent to, it's like, whoa, what wee devils? They mm -hmm. just crack up. So we were talking about earlier, uh, if, if we weren't having the internet, right? So I'm working with a guy at the moment in the background, we're talking about what would happen if you didn't have the internet? So could, could you imagine now doing that to kids? By the way, taking your phone off you actually doing it. I know I know there is people that do that. I, I wasn't successful in that. I wasn't successful in that. I can't I, I found it very hard to take. Now don't stay my boy and my girl now obviously they're 16 and 20 but I'm trying to take I can only imagine the next generation of kids getting into work. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think mm -hmm. what what they could have taken off myself. You know what I mean like, obviously I, like, when I was just like that, you know, maybe going you can't listen to music or you're not going to football. You know what I mean? Maybe something like that. You know? Aye. But aye, it's a different generation. Now. Totally, totally different. I worked with, work with my boy and I know what you're saying. Aye. Like 100%. I brought him through his apprenticeship and he's he's my right hand man. He's my ears. He's everything right. He's my eyes. And, I, and, I, and me and him can be going great. And he'll just, I mean, like even last week, and we can be going great. And uh, he'll just turn around and say something like, oh, by the way, the title says that uh, we have to cut the buttons in. And I'm like, what the fuck? We just went to the job there. Go and you run up the stair and find out what's what. And then come down. The first thing is, is like, right, that's what's happening. But he's time served now, right? Okay. And I'm saying, look, you're not a daft boy uh -huh, anymore, right? Uh -huh. This is like, you know, 
you've got to man up. <laughs> aye. <laughs> aye. There we go, right? Aye. But I'm saying, right, so but an hour later with a cup of tea, driving it in another job, and it's, oh, we've to do that. I went, what do you know come down and tell me that right away for? <laughs> eh, don't know. I'm like, but why? Why do you know? No, it'd be the first thing in my mind right away because my mind is sort of kind of going, right, the more I write, I'm doing this, 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 that, that, right. like that, right? And then he's with me, so he's away and doing a boiler, and he's superb. What he's doing, his copper works, some of the finest I've seen as well, can beat guys that I've worked with and seen for years, right? Okay, immense, right? And I've came doing Muro on a big job recently, uh, last few, last, last year, a couple of years ago, and I've come doing the went, Joseph, what you need to do is you'll need to come up the stairs, there's a pipe along there, you need to move it for them. Because I'm basically running then, I need to deal with all them. I'm, they're right. saying to me to do it, and then I'm going, right, can you, you'll need to come off that. Oh, what do you mean? You do it. I'm <laughs> doing this. And I'm like, ah, right, and then what happens is it's argy bargy And it's just each other. And it's I think that it's quite embarrassing because we've gave people too many laughs behind the back and they're going, oh, there's a two at it again. Aye. You know? <laughs> and it, it is, it's funny, right? But it's no funny because it's came to, like, really, like, just go up the road stuff, you know what I mean? Aye. And then I start to go, you know, what the fuck am I doing? You know what I mean? What's, you know, your approach could be maybe Aye. better, but then again, his approach could be a bit better, you know? But it's easy how, like, things kick off. But he's no guilty of his phone. But no. there is boys that are just totally, you I know, know I, I was guilty so of my, being on my phone as an adult. Aye. So I can only imagine with kids. Some some boys own jobs, some like that. No, there's one boy we know who walks about and he's got an earpiece in the whole job and you're like, what are you doing, son? You know, you can't do that. It's uh, like somebody's need... shouting on you or whatever. Or, or like, anything, man. Something could, something could be about to hit you and you're not hearing nothing. Or especially in mm -hmm. that game, eh? You've got to be focused. I, I, I'm on my phone all day at my work. Mm -hmm. I call it my work, but right. it doesn't feel like work, you know, um, because in the studio and you're on the phone all the time, a massive part of it's social media. See, when I yep. go home, right, just go up the stairs, put it on the chest, come down the stairs. Do you? Yeah, you, oh, is that you? Yeah, that, that's, that's, switch that, that, off. That, that, that's a bit right. time do you do that? Has you got enough time? I might get home at like, say, seven. Right. And I'll just put that phone away. That's brilliant. And then we've got a wee rule in the house, like, my wee boy's six, and if he notices, like, the missus or me on the phone, right. like, he he's allowed to come and take it off you. You can oh. take it off you and just put it away. That's brilliant. Yeah. And that, that's because you that, can just, you're doing it and yeah. it's habitual. And you know, the, the wee guys maybe want to do something. So he'll just come and take your phone off you and he's allowed to do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. good you're on thinking, him. Aye, good shout, well done. And then it's like a wee light bulb moment. So when I go in, I just, I ditch it up the stair, leave it there. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, because most people can't do that. Paul no, was I, like, I, 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 I couldn't do it. It's a good idea, but I couldn't do it. Thank you. I'm not on TikTok yet, so you know, <laughs> I need to get a right change. We're all sitting here, and for two hours, we'll know, apart from you, you've got to look at the notes. Anyway, aye, aye. Right, the notes. Well, this is going to be. I know Joseph was at a job and he's trying to get me, but I'm not even going to. I mean, imagine you speaking, you speaking, and me sitting and going, right? You know what I mean? One, it's segment. Yeah. But then again, I've seen my boys come down to see me for their dinner and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. And it's just that. He's on the phone, you know what I mean? Aye. Like constant, and you're like, walk I take a street. picture of them. Aye, it's way it's totally it's, switched off. People eh? have just learned how to walk aye. using mental satellite navigation, <laughs> man, because nobody looks where they're going. I've, I've, <laughs> I've done it, man. It is mental. I can't it's, do that. I, I was, I was, I I was on a job, man. I, I don't know, maybe a roll shop, and I came out, and this road's usually clear, so I'm just walking, man. <laughs> and I went, I'm just like, I go, whoa, man. And I, I never even get my heat up, man. I walk right into a big metal fence, man, that put up as a barrier, man. I'm like, joking, man. Everybody, everybody also, just to the side of the Radisson Blue, you're saying that, man. And I walk right into it, man. I was like, oh, joking, man. Everybody's <laughs> saying, man. I didn't even get to see. It would be good if you're doing TikTok. Uh, my, boy, my boy says that to me, you can't walk and text at the same time, can you? So I'm like, oh, right, you know, okay, right. So <laughs> Here, that's a good thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. Obviously, doing a wee bit of research, and I don't know, Paul, you're probably better at me than any of us that doing research, right? But hear me doing some research, and, and it came into my head this the day, and I was going, I was so tired for last night. I had two hours kept this morning, right? And I went to work, get back up the road to LA, so I'm going to go for a quick hour, try to get a quick hour, try to get a quick hour, and things were kind of my head about the day, obviously, going for the interview. And I'm like, oh, it just came to my head. When they established a, a, I was going to say suicide, Stress Awareness Month, was in 1992, supposedly, right? And I thought it came to my head. When did, when did mobile phones become available in the UK or worldwide, right? 
So I put in, I put in the Google, uh, and I said, right, when was mobile phones? Mobile phones were available in the late, the late 80s, right? right? Mm-hmm. Or the early 80s. Like, like but they, they, they mm-hmm. didn't, they never started buying them until ni- the 90s, right. the early 90s. Right? right so okay. it's come out the exact, the exact same time. As this. Now, I'm not saying it's linked, mm. but it's funny how, mobile uh, phones, uh-huh. I think, uh, there's got to be a link somewhere. So, uh, there's got to be. Just, a, I think there's a definite bit, you know what I mean? To, to me, it's just the, my grandfather, man. See, so there's a moment of silence, phone. Ah. And it's, and then, or even, even in work, like somebody will send me a, a drawing in work, and I like, go to look at the drawing, for like 12 notifications. I could stand there easily, I try not to, but easily 20, 25 minutes just sitting going through oh, it. And then before you know it, you're doing a rabbit hole and mm-hmm. you're sitting aye. watching some random woman making something on TikTok. Like, what am I actually <laughs> doing in my life, man? <laughs> you're diving into comments, going, I'm going to comment. <laughs> you're you're back to fit and vent, man, and smoke doing this. And then, <laughs> like, you've probably seen it, like I've made TikToks in work. Yeah, because I'll see stuff and I'm like, oh, I, need, I need to answer that. And I've, and I've been put up for it on jobs and of course, stuff, you man, still, man. And you know what? Like, you know what? what you know what's like toilets are like, man. And it's like, um, they get in and it's like, somebody's got a wee guy who does TikToks, a wee gimp and all that. And <laughs> 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 I, I just start writing stuff back, all right? Cause I, but I, end of my videos always, always say, have a blessed day. And it's, I just, like, I just run it, have <laughs> a that, blessed day. And they're like, so you have people coming in on your own man. jobs, aye? Aye. Ah, Is you on big sites or whatever? Aye, aye, on sites, aye. So they're, they're not actually saying it, they're just fucking getting out the toilet. And right? the same, man. <laughs> <laughs> You see, I see it in your face. That's what happens, isn't it? Just right, right, right. Right. They it's probably sit down and have a good laugh. See, you know what I mean? But, 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 but and it was an infamous induction. It was the first day, and young lass that does the induction, she walked in and she, she just looked at me. And I was the only guy there for the induction. She just walked back out. Like, that. And then she came back in with a wee cleaner. She never said that in the wee cleaners like that. Ah. She's seen you in TikTok. And I said, a wee bit of starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I just sat down there and knocked you, man. I'm trying to get my job done. So I was like, I'm just a wee baldy guy. It's all right. Aye, it's, it's because, but you, you do put work into it, don't you? You put work into, your, into the TikToks. And I think, ah, right. when I look at it, I'm like, God, he's hitting every note. He's hitting mm. every point. I need to like, check this out. He's on point. We haven't Aye, like, if, if somebody tries to hit me with something on, a, on an argumentative factor about stats or facts or anything, man, I'll... I'll I research the whole. You lot. research. I so you said two or three days, isn't it? So I, well, however long it takes me to find out everything, and, I, and I'll just hit them back and just just numbers because numbers confuse people anyway, don't they? Man? Uh, yeah. Especially when you hit them fast, man. So, <laughs> but I try and make sure they're accurate because see the second they know, somebody will just come back uh, and go, "It's no this, it's that," and then you're like, so boom, just just hit them with them, and uh, whether it's fit by politics, anything. Or well, the, I must admit, one of the one of the last ones I'd seen you do, there was it wasn't football. It was the was it the guy from Newcastle or something like that. <laughs> that, that was the one. Guy, that was the one that grew my account. I know. And it grew your account back on. Aye. And the guy from Newcastle was having a was with the guy from Newcastle was like, and the same equivalent of him, but with hair, right? <laughs> and, but didn't he? Because that's where that's where the, the conversation got started. And he was like, he was trying to slag him, and then you're like, right. I'm going to take four days on this research uh, to just to do this guy. And I was like, but it was all it was all nice and innocent. Ah, yeah, yeah. He he he's kind of. He's become part. No, <laughs> right, so here's what happened. He'd, 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 come out, he'd come out with a mad story about the Nicola Bully thing, mm. and I was like, and then accusing the husband, and I was like, oh, here we go. So I just kind of called him out, literally briefly, and then he made a whole video about me, and I was like, right. So I just took his whole video, stripped it, replied to everything he said. And it was quite a long video, uh, and that was the one that went kind of mental. And then, um, and then I done another one, and another another Scottish boy done one on him. And then he made a video about all oh, these guys take my videos and editing them. And I was like, what stuff you said? It's, it's no yeah. And then I'd, it blocked me. So I made another account and I, I tried to add him and, and speak to him. And he never responded to me. And then that night I was sitting in my bed. And the guy's, the guy's got a bit of a drink problem, which he's admitted publicly. He messaged me at 5 to 12 at night. Listen, mate, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. And I said, and then he told me like, his whole story uh, and all just, that. And I was like, oh, that's cool, man. I said, look, we can draw a line under it. We're cool. And then... For about four or five days, we were sound, and then he came up with another big video about me. And I was like, "That's that's that, it, man." Uh, and I, I came out and said, "Made a video because everybody was right tuned, didn't he?" I came out, made a video, and says, "Look, that's the end of it." Mm-hmm. And then, like five days later, later on, back again, just attacking him again. I was like, "Just, just you've came for me now." Just and then, after that day, he deleted every video off his TikTok, blocked me, and then he started making wee videos that were nothing like what he used to make that got right. followers, <clears> and it just isn't working for him anywhere. But that's but, what happens. I've noticed for you, you are concerned about people, as in you don't want to be the negative guy. Aye, you? You're, you're very concerned, and I think I've noticed that we're watching your your videos, and you're always trying to hit with the positive side from it. 
Uh, a, a question for you, Paul. Mm. Stresses as a podcaster, right? Now, when did you start doing the podcast? That's a question, actually. Uh, 2017. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> and then we went visual right. during the lockdown. So you, all oh, right. So you were doing audio for the few couple yeah. of years, or yeah, I so three years until started off at the kitchen table, um, and then I decided let's do it right, and we went to a studio once a month, right? Did four interviews, used once a week, and it gave us a content. And then during lockdown, I just thought let's go, let's go live. And what I didn't expect, and it wasn't by design, it just happened, was that we community started gathering. So if you, it's kind of gone up a wee bit now, but if you look at our first live stream, it was 147 views right. on, on a Celtic State of Mind on the YouTube. Right. Um, and you're kind of proud of that at the time. You're like, all right, Aye. But then that started going a wee bit bizarrely big. It Aye. exploded um, to the point where we're probably over all the platforms, 1.2 million a month. Wow. But well, that was 147 views. But what we've got from it is people DM you. Yeah. regularly and I'm, I'm always putting up my email address just send me an email mm -hmm. and people come to you saying you know what see during the months it was absolutely it was like an anchor it was yes you know for the mental health the one yeah. i seen people they were stuck in a house and that was never the design that was never but to hear that is just incredible oh, that is it's unbelievable changing, it? and then you've got the flip side because like what you're saying there see if somebody's getting a hard time even on comments on a live stream yeah you think they say right didn't go in too hard on them because yeah. They are a human being. Yes. And what they're trying to put across is probably a facade. Mm -hmm. You know, they're maybe no big and hard, and I mean that mentally rather yep. than um, physically, mm -hmm. you know. And so there's all that kind of stuff. But one of the big things that I noticed a huge change was, um, obviously, I, I'm talking Celtic every single day, every nuance yes. from the new football tap to who should be playing left back and all the rest aye, of it. Aye. And you've just got to have an opinion. My opinion was the gaffer had to go, right? Yeah. And then before you knew it, um, the mainstream wanted to talk to a Celtic fan. And I thought, oh, that would be good. That would be good for a podcast. You never have an a, an idea of how that's going to go down. No, of course. But the minute you do that, it just goes in, in, in meltdown. And mm -hmm. it is Celtic and Rangers fans that come for you. Yeah, and they come and it, it becomes <laughs> really personal. <clears throat> and it's Aye. like, wow, I didn't, I didn't realise so many people had an opinion about my hairstyle. You know what I mean? <laughs> Aye, Paul aye. John Dykes walking aye. about like Same. it's 1996. <laughs> well, we've got a bald hair there. He gets a lot of bald hair. Look at his, his tattoo in his neck and all that. And it's like, it's, know, it's ridiculous. It's bizarre though. It, and the, the thing that worries me is it absolutely doesn't bother me in the no. slightest. Right? I'm just glad it's there. I don't care what colour it yeah. is as long as it is. But it <laughs> really? could harm somebody. Yeah. It could aye, you know, aye, 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 there's somebody who could, you could. Aye. Words are very if I know. Words are so effective. And, it, and, yeah. and they, they, they really cut deep with a lot of people. So you try and re reason with them, and Aye. then you try a bit of humour, and then you realise I, I just can't communicate with you mm. because it's just it's just Aye, evil and it's cruel. So I've seen the kind of darker side of it, but I worry about that yeah. because it could catch somebody off guard. It could catch somebody in one of their moments, and it's yeah. like right. And there's mm -hmm. a guy I'm no name him, but there's a guy who, who messaged us, and he was a self farmer, mm -hmm. and he, he mentions a particular episode that he was watching. He says, and that was the last time I did it. So he's 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 counting the days and the months and all the rest of it. And you think, how on earth could talking about Celtic uh, have an impact, like a positive impact? Uh, but it's more <clears> to do with the community aspect. So when somebody yeah. appears on a comment section, people recognise their name mm -hmm. and acknowledge that they're there. And then Aye. they have a wee conversation. It might be the only conversation they have that day. Mm. Aye. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's, that's that, isn't it? Well, that's, that's, and that's so a, true. On a similar angle to that, and I, I totally agree with that. I mean, the people saying that about, you know, you're being baldy or your hair. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. Throw back to Aye, Aye, it's like, oh, come on, you know, but... Uh, I own that same thing like lockdown as well when I started doing uh, Sorry Treasure Show and I was sitting up one night and it was great for me because it was, I was getting time off work and I was getting immersed myself in Aye. records and music and books and stuff that I need time to catch up and <clears throat> it turns out to be a really good friend now right and he messaged me I started this page up on Facebook and it was like roots and bluegrass and you know music right yeah. and it could be anything for country to you know, reggae dub, but just roots culture, right? And uh, people were just posting up tracks, and I, I put there was something I like. Uh, oh God, he'll kill me for for forgetting what the track was, right? But it was like a, a Ralph Stanley or something like that a track, right? Like an old bluegrass one. And this guy get touch me, uh, Nick Nick Button, right? And he's like, hey, I've been learning that the mandolin, 
and he's like, I've been reeling through a bad time. He'd left his wife and stuff, right? And he was speaking of 80s, and he, I was like, ah, it's two in the morning, you know? And he was just like, wasn't he like talking about self harm and anything like that? But he was just saying he was in a real dark place. And I says, look, here's my phone number, right? And here's, we we're on a wee group chat, as, uh, you know, all through, you know, uh, it was all savers, people, you know, like, through weather all and stuff like that, right? So here, join the chat. So I was doing these wee swords, like the, the, the weather all savers swords that used to be, right? Spray painting, right? Just yeah. like making wee plaques for people, right? Okay, and just like kind of sending, right? And at the time. And it was, you know, I sent Nick one of these down. So we were kind of talking to Nick and Nick came on to the chat. And Nick then turns around and says to me, I remember the first work that I'd run, done with Andrew. And I was like, well, what was that? And he says, I designed that label. They were my swords. And it was like, you so that chance again, you know what I mean? I was like, are you joking me? Wow. So and out of that, Nick ended up designing my Sorry Treasure logo. So he was so, one that done that, right? He was one that done that. It's and beautiful. he was a drummer in Two Lone Swordsman. Yeah. And he was members of a band Westworld years ago, Sonic Boom Boy, the track was called. He was in that band. He played he's played drums with Willie Nelson and session yeah, stuff. Man. He's a big uh, he ended up he brought Andy Bell to the table uh, for being guests on my show. And it turns out that I've met Andy Bell. Andy Bell came to see me in Carcassonne and how it all goes run and run, right? Uh, Andy Bell had asked me to write stuff about seeing him live. And it was just like to take comments. I said, Andy, this is where I'll go, right? This is where I'll, I'll lose myself out and go, right? I need to go. I'll need to start with a big story and pick out what you want out of it. You know what I mean? So I'd done a big thing. Big, you know, and that's when I went, went had a few pints, uh -huh. met, you know, and then finish it the next night, run the crow, cut, I'd just sitting there, I'd phones on, get them there, sent them in. He said, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use a lot of it. So Faye and Nick, like, sitting that night, you know, and me going... I don't know, you know, you need, to, you need to get in touch with this guy here. Because we were generally concerned, you know. Yeah. And we put him at a hole. And it turns out he was so well connected that all he done was just push Sonic Treasure Show further Aye. to other people. And Sonic yeah. Treasure in that Show. community. If, you, if you've no, you Sonic know, Treasure Show is, is totally different for me. I, I, I've never experienced anything like Sonic well, Treasure Show. Well, and it's, what it's, people liked was, was, I was I was speaking. So see, like it was, I was looking at, and I was going to Facebook. You had guys like DJing and stuff, and they're like, you know, lights blinking, the flash going, no speaking, right? I was playing music and I was telling stories about it, mm -hmm. and I was, I was like, being, you were interacting. Yeah. So aye, people aye. were actually going back to sitting like the old days with the wireless on and listening to like, I don't know, age, I'm fifty two, right? But I would, I would remember sitting listening to Doctor Dick's Midnight Surgery, Richard Park. When he was on Radio Clyde, and then my mum would be sitting knitting, it was during the school holidays, the knitting machine out, and things like that. It was like going back to the uh, times. Aye. People would be like, I'll oh, turn the telly off, we want to listen to fucking the Sonic Treasure show, or we want to, you know, we want to uh, listen or watch a Celtic State of Mind, put it on for you, you know what I mean, uh, with the TikTok shit. And that's what aye. that kind of helped. We didn't realise as well, but maybe help people get a wee hold with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the community, it's, it has, it's a wee, wee built communities, I think. Yeah, so that's, radio that is, is it thing. Buena Vida? Is it radio Buena Vida's? Buena Vida as well. Buena Vida's over on the south side. They get in touch with us and are really kind of them. And I, I, I'm one of the ones that gets a tour show with them. I do once a month. And mm, they built right. this wee community hub. It's right across the Queen's Park Cafe, uh, the pub uh, on Vicky Road. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I was going to ask you, so they've, got a, they've got a video live as yes. a, all the time and you see them walking in and out changing aye, it's, a, it's a wee cafe we, we done the plumbing in the shop as well it's a wee cafe bring right. your own bottle type uh, ah, right, okay. coffee shop and they've got in the wee sort of bay window but they've got uh, the, the set up the decks, aye, the decks that. That. so you're standing there uh, you're sending something pre-recorded but I love going over live and doing it live so uh, in that aspect they used to do it from a wee record shop across the road right. some great reward so now they've moved to the Cooperage they're doing like Paul Shaw's Road or something like that, and they've they got that wee place and they bust their ass by the way to get it. But Do the they? community all chucked in, and it's even at that, it was overwhelming as well for them. But it's an amazing, wee beautiful hub that they've got, yeah. And again, that's a thriving community as well. Right. And it's at the center of that, it's really lovely. And you can just you're just standing there and you're like, right, welcome to Buena Vida and uh, on the Vicky Road and uh. Oh, there's a hey, you're like, oh, you, where's your mask? You know what I mean? Aye, you know, aye. you're like, you know, masks are still time. People uh, walking around, they used to be speaker outside, but 
Aye, but people love that interaction, you know, Aye. you get a text for your mate in Belfast, he's stone and cooking, you're like, Alan, how you doing, blah, blah, and, you know, that's it, people, Aye. and I think, I guess, through, like, it's interacting with people as mm. well. By the way, it helps your stresses. Yeah. Aye. You know what yeah. I mean? It helps your stresses, I feel. Yeah. And that's maybe a, a, a good outlet for how we get off collectively and personally, Aye. you know what I mean, with what we do. I'm not sure, I bet you this helps you. Right? Oh, right, you 100%, know? I think. So I'm thinking about, obviously when I was doing the, the podcast, it was all from, obviously losing my dad, but it wasn't about losing my dad, it was actually losing, seeing people, or the stats going up for the suicide was it's always horrendous, mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't matter the percentage of guys and, and girls, but I started going like that, hold on a minute, this, this, can, this is so fixable. It's like, you can stop this from ha actually happening. But I think, we just spoke about it, if you're silent and you're not telling anybody, Aye. that's mm -hmm. that's when it goes. That's when they, they can cross that line. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, that's if he's, we're all doing stuff to try and stop it. And I well, I unbeknown maybe as well, just doing it for Absolutely. their own Aye, yeah. what, what we love and what we do. I think you know. I mean, that's it is generally. I think that's it. You, we love what we do, and yeah. it's like. Listen, I, at the end of the day, I'm a plumber. You know yeah. what I mean? I've, I've got my boy. We, we've got a job tomorrow. We'll need to be up, up towards Drimming Way and working for a company and we'll need to be there at six to aye. get ahead of people because... And that's stressful, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, of course, aye. That's worrying and stressful because you go, right, we need to go in here, we've tested everything, uh, but then you're like, right, we need to get everything all back up and yeah. running again and because the client's coming up and we want to know if the heating's going to be working for them. They, they were meant to be uh, staying away for a month now. They're coming back like next week so we need to get the job. The house three quarters ready, yeah. And you're like, ah, right, okay. So bang goes my what I was doing. It bang goes me tidying my house. Mm -hmm. You know what aye, I mean? Aye. Uh, so you know, yeah. And I sometimes like I feel as though all we're doing is, is clearing up other people's. You know, oh, I'm stressed. But I was at a job the other week, and it was a woman. She had, I, I, I don't go into it too too much, yeah, right? right? But uh, it was like the be all. She, a boiling water tap was the button properly, right? You know, and. And it was like, oh, I'm stressed out because I've got, I've got this to have in a box and I'm going, my life's in boxes in right? Okay. I mean, go and stick the fucking kettle on. Uh, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you know, so you just, you know, everybody can go to their tap and go, oh, you know, well, that's, that's a boil matter, you know. That's just yes, but there, she was stressed out about that. Aye. She was majorly stressed. Like, pff, you know, oh, Aye. you know. I don't, but I can understand that because that might be important to her, her, that's her that's way of life. So you can't undermine a sort of shape, by the way, you know what I mean? You can't undermine that. Yeah. Because then you're falling into the trap of, aye, check your neck, check Baldy or check your neck, you know what I mean? Aye, exactly. You're like, come on, what are you doing? So you've got to balance, haven't you, you know? Look, aye. You've got to, you know? Here's a question, uh, again, to, to, to everybody. Who, who's your... Again, we're talking about how do you get out the stressful moments and all that. But who? So, for example, you say that you you're doing stuff and people are are catching on to it, right? Mm -hmm. And they are you're potentially saving their day, right? By by interacting with them, responding and replying to them. But who was who was your person? To, who were you looking at that made you that inspired you to say, "I'm going to do something"? Can Can you remember that? Can you remember mm -hmm. a point, or did no. you just? Always no, really yourself. Not, there was, I say it was politics at the time, and at the time there was a, there was an election coming up, and obviously COVID was happening, and so I was obviously, you know, quite outspoken about COVID, especially on TikTok, and even in the group chat and stuff, and it was, um, and people were saying stuff, pe people who were, at the time as I was, SNP supporters, and saying stuff, but saying stuff I didn't agree with, and I was like, there's a better way this can come across, and yeah. that's when I was like, like they're good at it, but they're, they're saying the wrong things, and then and that's right. when I just kind of put myself out there again, hid my face. I was like, I don't want them to see my face. I, I was so shy about it. And then I was five, six videos, and I was like, Do you know what? I'll just show my face. And I deleted all the ones that didn't have my face. And then again, they started taking you, off. But you've seen a gap? Aye, aye. To fix it. Aye, if you, if you Bas like... basically to argue the point using facts and figures, right. rather than just arguing the point using an opinion. Right. Because ah, if you're right, saying yeah. stuff and, and you're not backing it up with what's out there, then what you're really saying is irrelevant. And if it's if what you're saying doesn't stand next to the facts and figures, then all you're saying is something that's wrong. Yeah. And then, and then for that, and then like it can help. Even back then, and like that that first page, I had never really got massive, but it opened up a few doors for me. I ended up in 
like Zoom calls with Nicola Sturgeon and, and stuff like that. And then wow. I came up to an election mm-hmm. and um, a member of our press office had messaged me and asked me if I wanted to do campaigning through TikTok and all that. And I refused. I said, I, was like, I don't want to do it. Cause it's, it's just, again, it's just too much pressure. And I had TikTok for, for me, it was fun. Yeah. And even if the stuff I was talking about wasn't fun to everybody, it was like, for me, it was, I was enjoying it. I was like, well, I'm not having the pressure of, out there and mm. like campaigning for these and stuff. I says I'm I'm happy to do leaflet drafts. These if you want leaflet drafts in the whole community, that's fine. But I'm not going on and talking about and try to get people to vote. That was never my thing. Right, my mm-hmm. thing was always talking about the good and the and the stuff that that the SNP done that, that I didn't agree with because like I was an SNP supporter, an SNP member, but I didn't I didn't stand with everything SNP stood for. I was I'm probably a lot more left wing than what the SNP will ever be. Mm-hmm. And a lot of their stuff didn't stand with me. And that's when I came into like using facts and figures. Well, you can't really say that if what the SMP, what you're saying is the SMP yeah. do this, but the facts and figures show that they're actually doing that. You, you need to just, just call it in the middle and, nah, just, and, and be straightforward with it, know what I mean? No, like you made a great call then. Aye. Aye. Because before you know it, you'd be witch hunted. You know what I mean? Aye, I was aye, saying that. Go aye. Against you, so be yourself. Aye. And then you eventually I, f- I f- end up just like, f- after the, the, the last Scottish election, I just, I just kind of hit a low and like, I never I started posting like one TikTok a week and then it became none. Well, you did go missing, didn't you? Um, well, well I've, I've went missing a couple of times on it. Aye. Um, is that is that obviously because you've you've became aware of your own mental health coming down and you're like, I need to give it a break. Uh, but it's, I, it's 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 like a loss of energy. It's right. Like you just kind of hit a certain point and go, yep. no, this this just it's no for me anymore. And as much as I still love politics, I'm still uh, the people who I connected with. On TikTok through politics, I'm still brilliant pals with them. Really, in a group chat with them and brilliant. But I just, I just don't talk about politics anymore at all. No, um, and then, and then it just then it eventually became. Foot, it never, in fact, it never became football until somebody wound me up, and they wound me up because I had a select tap on the video, and then that was that. Just became because I'd always say to myself, I'm never going to talk about football. It just brings so much hate. But see, after I spoke about politics, I was like, nothing can be worse than that. Is that right? Oh, so that got you, that oh, got you ready for that? man, when you're, when you're dealing with, whatever side you're on, when you're having to deal with people on the other side, right. they're, they're brutal. Where it's like, so I was obviously, I was SNP, so I'm dealing with Tories, Labour, just unionists in general. And then it became Americans. And when you're dealing with Americans, it just goes, it just Aye. goes well. And I was like, do you know what? If I can deal with that, I can deal with it. It's a good apprenticeship to start talking about Scottish football. Dealing with like, Rangers fans, and even even Celtic fans, there's a lot of Celtic fans that don't like me as well. And, but to, just dealing with football fans in general is easy, man. Aye. And it's, it's nothing, so I enjoy, I, I enjoy that. And, and I sit and, like, you probably see my stuff, I'll put stuff out now that I know is going to get a bite. Right. And, and it's kind of like a, like a segue into... Like my next video, I'll say something and I know somebody's going to reply to that and then that'll be my next video that kind of, I can put that sure, in day yeah, well. Yeah. So it's just about knowing your so audience. It's mm-hmm. because of the way you are, you're, you're quite militant, you're quite... I, 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 I always, always try and plan for the next couple of videos and then you'll see it, see if, see if I put a video and I'm like, right, put this out and I'll get a bite. See if I don't get a bite, you'll see like my next video will just be me doing something stupid on TikTok. Aye. And it's because nobody's bit yet, but I'm like, it will come, it will come. And if it doesn't come, I'll, like, I'll need to put something else out. <laughs> and I guess try and be like factual, fun. but I say it, I try and say it in a way that somebody's going to bite to it. Or uh, like my post, my post derby videos always do well. Anytime it's a derby, as long as we win. If, if we don't win, you'll know him from on TikTok for about <laughs> and a half, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> but when we win, I, ju- I just come out and I, and I go wild and, and they start going mental and they just get hundreds of bites and hundreds of bites. <laughs> and then I've, I've got a video sitting on my TikTok and it was like, stupid man, it was like a score predictor. It was like, it comes up and then it's like Rangers 8-3 and then it's like me greeting in the bath, right? And it's, it's stupid, right? It's pure silly. <laughs> but it, it was just, Full of loads of videos of people, Rangers are the best, and this and that. Aye, so just, yeah. There's just so many comments just, in there that aye. I could use at any time. Yeah, you should put it. In, in, aye, it's aye. just all banter. <laughs> aye, 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 material. Aye, it's your getting material. Just, just sitting, waiting for it, and just. See, I'll, I'll put something up, then I'll, I'll fear to go back and look at it. Aye. Whereas he's the opposite. He's the only one. 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 Death threats usually come in the form of a private message. Never, nobody other friends to kill mm-hmm. you publicly, do they? Um, no. And so I just, I just leave them. And I've always thought like, do I keep them, do I screenshot them, do I reply to them? And I'm like, do you know what? Just leave them, they'll go away. And they usually do. 
Um, but I've, well, I've responded to people who have threatened me. So that must, I was going to say that, but give me a lot of stress <laughs> and anxiety. Somebody got us in. I, what the hard, you I think the hardest part is that everybody that leaves these comments, and I'm, when I, 99% of the people that leave these comments hide their face, hide their name. Yep. Oh, yeah. yep. And the problem you have there is when you're walking about outside, you don't know who you that person is. Oh, and yeah, I've, right. I've had, like, one of my first videos on the account I had before this one, before it got banned, before I yep, on this yep. one, and I put up a video and it was literally somebody came on and says, I knew, I, I try to think of it, it was like, I knew I should have lamped you when I seen you on site. <sighs> So now you're going, right, it's somebody it's I work somebody, with. Somebody, work so, with. somebody who's working with it. And I was like, do you know what? He's called me at public. So I'll just call him back and go, if you were going to date, you were going to date, and blah, blah, blah. And it went into a whole thing. And like, wow. You kind of do nothing. And so far, he's done nothing. So, right, I, safer now. But well, safer than I have to <laughs> so. So, so, to yourself, Paul, was there anybody who, who you looked at and inspired you that you like, right, I'm going to do that? As he's my kind of, you know what, right? Maybe cliched, but. I love Kevin Bridges and there's that sketch where he's talking about when you finally realise your dad's a knob, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I never want my wee man to think that I'm aye, a knob kind of thing, aye. but maybe already right, does. Um, I'll be called a loser to you. Know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I think um, it is quite cliched, but I look up my old fella doing the pits in the minor strike. Mm -hmm. So talking about politics, you know, politicised for a young age because the old guy's no earning because he's on strike. And then when you become an adult, you look back, you think the principles of these men to stand up to Thatcher, mm -hmm. you know, and, and go on strike for 12 right. months with no wages. And like my wow. old man, he was four of us. And at that time, you know, we were probably all under the age of what, seven? Four kids under seven. They were in their <laughs> early 20s, my mum and dad, you know. And you look back and you think, the minute one of them broke the strike, they were a scab for life. Of course. You know? Aye, uh, no return they, for that. Exactly. But all the principal men, you imagine the stress that they were under. You imagine going home Holy and... Boat. The hand-me-downs and the free school dinners and all that, and maybe the wife and the screaming burns, you know, that's pressure, you know. I that donated my paper money, that's yeah. what I used to do. Really? During the strikes, so It's incredible. Sorry, what was that? Incredible. I used to donate my paper money. Oh, did you? Aye. Uh, she could go down the town on the Saturday and put it in the bucket. Oh. Uh, then that was, that was a horrendous time. Oh, terrible. But the kindness in the community aye, that, that aye, you've seen. Aye. But it tore the heart out of these communities, you know. Yeah. And I go back, my mum and dad still live in the villages, most of my family's still live there as well. Um, and I, I went to the big smoke, so I moved to Dunfermline. <laughs> right. And when I go back out to the villages, they're, they're kind of like the, the land that time forgot, a lot of them. There's no investment. They've just been kind of left. There's no industry. You know, I remember my old fella getting a job and them saying to him, Bilston Glen, uh, says to him, you know, your two boys will work here. You know, so there was no, mm -hmm. you know, succession of aye. guys going down the pit and having jobs. This, this is aye. that for everybody. There was no aye. industry, you know, there was no hope. And you go now and it, there's big, big drug problems in these places. So I think in terms of inspiration, my old fella to begin with, but then trying to inspire the, the wee guy. Aye. So that maybe there's some kind of legacy. Yeah. You might say, that's pretty cool. He made a documentary or... Yep. No, or you know he, he wrote a few books or whatever you know mm -hmm. so that's always it and i think since he came along six and a half year ago my view on life I and how i deal with things yeah completely different yep yep so have yeah stay staying positive and making sure that you're yeah i uh, trying to be the, the best role model 100 uh, percent. and like that's, I, I would never let my, my, uh, my wee guy see me drunk for uh, example right yeah yeah i'm not a teetotaler i'm not a big drinker but i just wouldn't let him see me drunk because right. there's going to come a point where he thinks i'm a knob and you think to yourself, I don't want that to happen, Aye. you know. For a wee while, for a wee spell in his, in his youth, he might think you're a hero kind of thing. Right. So you just want to keep that for yeah. as long as possible. I'm taking you know? ready here. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're, I, I, you're I, ready. I, I'm just saying, my, my boy knows I'm an ob, so it's... it's, 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 it's like, my my <laughs> three boys know that. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> Dad, you're just, no, don't do it. That. <laughs> like that. I said to my, my boy the other day, I'm ready to get it right. And I says, son... I says, see when I was getting, see since I've been getting older, I don't always bring the whoop. And he was like, that. he said, but see when I bring it, there it is, right? <laughs> and ends like that. He'll eat for that. Oh, I, I think it's so. If you read it again, sometimes as I'm getting older, son, I don't always bring the whoop. Aye. He said, but when I bring it, there it is. And he's, he starts to laugh, and I'm like, ah, I got you there, right? So he's like, poor laugh. He's like, no, you're still an obda. <laughs> but at least I got a couple of smiles at him. Uh, but I. No, I had to bring that in because he'll hate that. Uh, right, so, Stress Awareness Month, 
I, we didn't know anything about it. Now we know more about Stress Awareness Month. Uh, let's let's talk about. I don't know, actually. No, what are we talking about now? You see what, see what uh, Paul was saying there. We worked with a guy just just it reminded me. Uh, we were up at uh, oh, where is it? Diageo mm-hmm. uh, up by Kirkcaldy. Yeah, is it? Is it? Was, I can't remember the name of the place. The big guy was running the job. Who, who was it, the character that Bruce Willis played in the Die Hard movies? John uh, John McLean. John McLean, right? Uh, John McLean builders, and he was right. John McLean was big blue nose, right? Brilliant guy. Just the stories. Big mining family. He was from, right? And uh, he was telling us he's, when his dad started up uh, the building game, he'd come out the pits. So his dad's come down. And John's went and said something. He was only young at the time. He's went blah blah. He's looking for a job, right? Uh, wee Jimmy or something like that, right? so the boys come down for an interview and his old man's went, aye, 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 right, we'll be in touch, son, right, and the boy went and left and his, his dad's talking about like, he's not getting any fucking job, and he's like, how know, he's fucking brand new, and he went, nah, his great-grandfather was a fucking, was a scab, a way back in one of the, the strikes years and years ago, well, and he's know. like, that's still, you know, his, his you know, I, he's still there in the community, I, and I was like, "That's amazing!" You know, that was like amazing. Mm-hmm. The guy, the guy's, he's like, "No, he was a, he was a scab then." It just tore the communities apart. You know, he, he came from uh, John Thompson's uh, oh, village. Yeah. Aye, that's where he was from. Mm-hmm. Aye, mm-hmm. but uh, I was amazed at that. You know, when you said that, I was like, <laughs> "Big John McLean," I know. Yeah, there's a big, there's a big boozer in the middle of one of the estates, still there, called the Greyhound, right? So big shout out to the Greyhound, you can imagine. Aye. He just, he was the telling rocks. the stories about when they were boys, what they'd done with the Greyhounds. Aye, it was a big thing aye. in the villages, that's right? What they, aye, 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 aye the stories he was telling us, like, so the, 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 salt up their nose and pepper and all mm-hmm. that, and like, you know, just, sorry Paul, sorry. Aye. But the, the local boozer was called the Greyhound, it was a big <laughs> thing, and there was like a golden Greyhound above the door, <laughs> kind of thing. But obviously at that time, there was no money kicking about. No. Um, and then one of the boys um, who was a scab who had crossed the picket line walks into the boozer one night, and all the miners are sitting there, maybe nursing a pint for the whole night kind of thing. And it was uh, pool boys and all that kind of stuff getting thrown at them, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Years later, we were in a, a, a holiday in Spain, and my old fella met him and was talking to him. And he had to he had to emigrate, you know, he had to go to Spain to aye. get away from it all. It was like you're marked and that was it. Aye, was aye. Wow. No, it was just, yeah. but again, it tore the communities apart, aye. didn't yep. it? There was no community. Aye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Aye. Aye. And that's Thatcher. Wow. Thatcher's Britain. Aye, Thatcher's Britain. Mm-hmm. She's all. Right. Uh, I'm knackered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually that. I'm actually empty. I was like, we're, we're spoken about we've got 30 points to, together. So let's let's try and look at some of the points that, some of the research that, that I've done. Uh, and let's just see if I can talk about that. Right. So we've, we've spoken about highlighting the role in the workplace the stress and the importance of creating a healthy work environment. So there's a thing, new new work, I don't know what's where it'd be like in your game, but I know that when I was with Royal Mail, there was always a big drive on uh, mental health, right? Mm-hmm. And obviously stress and anxiety. And they would they would run run programs for staff to come and do. Now I know that's a lot more positive now. I know I know a lot of companies and businesses are doing that. I don't imagine that would be the game with the user. It's Started to creep in the last few years, but no, no anywhere near where it should be. You hear about it when you come in for your induction, go on a new site and you get the induction and it's like, here's what we do for mental health. And it's always like the most minimal thing that like you can go and speak to such and such. And it's, there does need to be... Do they call it like human resources now or something? Like well, it, that, it, that H, HR that? still exists, but it's, yeah. it's, it's totally different. It's, it's basically just go, go and speak to one of the site agents and if you can't speak to them, speak to somebody else. It's like... It's not really what you need. Right. But, Aye. but it's, for, for when I started in the game, just to the last couple of years then, it's, it is starting to creep in, but they're, they're decades behind catching up with anybody else. And it is because it's a male-run environment. Yeah. It's just no... So just there's nobody there enough. to say, take the reins and say, look, Aye. let's go into a well-being course, for example. Aye, Aye, Aye. Or, or let's all have five minutes of mindfulness, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I know when I went to some some uh, charity, I went to my Men Matter Scotland, and sometimes they would do they would do like a, a mental health chat. Or, or they'd run for two hours, and at the very start of the program, they were so right. Let's everybody do take five minutes of meditation, and they would just say right, and they would just wait, and then obviously breathe, and the guide would uh, would count it down if you like. 
and just closing your eyes. So I suppose if we're talking to people, and if one way out of stress, because when when you're aware of something, if you're if you're aware of something, then then you can decide to change it, change the road that it's going down. So I suppose said before that I was no bothering work, and then I would come in for my work, and then I would crack up at the veins, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're, I wasn't aware of it. Mm-hmm. But now, if you can see stress coming, so this is the Stress Awareness Month, right? So now we all know about Stress Awareness Month. Now about that, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking now, how would you approach it in the future if if you're having a stressful moment? So would you go, like, hold on a minute. You say that you need that time. No, no, I'm not doing that to do this. Aye, aye, aye. So much. similar like that, but you're like, hold on, wait till... So if you're stressing out with something, would you go and do five minutes of mindfulness and just sit well, I'm, and take a breather? My missus always would, would turn around and tell you, as soon as I've done that blowing up and stuff, I'll I'll just sit in the room in pure darkness. And I, I just sit there and lights off, nothing, nothing making us. Even if she's there, I'll not talk to her. She can talk to me and I'll not reply to her. I'll just sit there and I, and I just, I don't really know what's going through my head. I think it's just the, the silence and then eventually I'll just be like, right. You just kind of go. Right I just, I just kind of. So you're processing, aren't you? Really? Just aye, 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 processing aye, aye. And, just... and I just shut myself off everything else. And I, and I think, I think I've always been like that. But I think I've only really started to notice it kind of more recently, um, because my missus is the least argumentative person in the world. Yeah. Which isn't what I'm used to at all. So like, I'll not argue with her. I'll just right. shut up. And but like, obviously it's your missus. You end up arguing with stuff, even if it's no her fault or your fault or MDs and. She'll not argue with me, so it's just like, right, just shut up and just go. And then that's when I start to kind of notice, right, this just sitting, being quiet, give me five, ten minutes, however long it takes, and then I just, I'll come out and I'm fine, and then I just go back to being my, my hyperactive, annoying self. And So there you go. So teamwork, right? If you've got somebody, and again, again I'm a single guy as well, so, but I could only imagine if I, if I think back uh, when I was falling out with my exes or whatever, is because I wasn't wasn't ready to to take that time out, mm-hmm. or maybe they weren't ready to give me that time to, aye, to aye. like. So you've got that. Aye, so I suppose aye, that's aye. very important if you give your partner or whoever it is you're aye. with time to let's chill and just breathe. Mm-hmm. The, I read the power of now. You read the power of now or anything like that. Have you read in these self help books? So the power of now is all about shut up, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. stop what you're doing, think about it. And then process it, process it in your head, and, yeah, and, yeah. and I think we can. I think we live in a world where everything's rushed. Don't to be kids on their phones and all that, but we we rush everything. I rush. I still rush everything, but now I'm starting to. As I, I suppose as we get older, we start to go right. Okay, I think we can process it in a different way, and we can we can understand it. But for anybody who can't understand it, what would your advice be to them? What would you say? People Even though we're kind of getting the answer to be, what just, saying? just take, <clears throat> take time. Shall and, we? Aye, it's just and it's that old saying: "This too shall pass." So just, just, just let it, just let it go, and eventually, it, mm-hmm. if it, if it's nothing major, it'll, it'll go away. Even the major stuff will go away eventually if you just keep time. Mm-hmm. It's like what you say, like you talk about arguments. And you can't even remember what they were about. Oh, aye, so aye, remind aye. yourself, this isn't that important. Aye, you know, in a aye. month's time, I'll even I'll forget aye, what we're arguing about. I've actually seen you know? me sitting in the situation that you're, you know. I went into the room and sitting, light off, got my bed, and then you've got that caught up in it. Aye. Because then it's something else. Hundred percent you say, Paul. What, what was the arguing about? Yeah. Mm. And then you then you you know, you know it's like thinking about what you've done, you're going, right, I've been on a date here or aye. whatever it's but I'd I could I could go into a black hole and find it very difficult to get out there. Aye. Well. And even in, I could go up the next day and still feel it and then I can go right, but and Claire's a good one for going, come on, right you, come on. Uh, and get an arm, but what if he didn't have that arm on you? Ah, he's yes. you know, yeah, that's it. Not everybody you know, does, you know what I mm-hmm. mean? It's you about know. identifying other people's triggers as well, uh, you know, and, and yes. signs. Like, I always think, when I speak to my, my old dear, first question, how's Candace? That's my wee sister. Right. First question, because if you didn't hear for her, you know there's something wrong kind of thing. Right. So people shut themselves away, mm-hmm. and they deliberately didn't answer the phone, and you didn't see them on social media. Um, there because, is that. You know, it's like they didn't actually want to speak to you. But you know Aye. that they're not doing too well, Aye, kind of thing. Must be so it's about try to identify that as well in people. So any yeah. anything at all, figure out how you can help yourself with breathing, meditation, you yep. know, time away, exercise. 
but also get the triggers for other people. What what are they thinking? Where are they? Because if you can figure that out, you can help them as well. Mm. Right. Mm. Uh, that's that's a good thing. The, the breathing exercises, isn't it? I do cold water as well, which I know a lot of people don't do, but the cold water helps me massively. Just the cold I water, water was time, man. I keep seeing it. I like so the, so I, I've got the bath. I've not, I've not actually used the bath. I've not got it. I've, I've got it. I've bought it, right? I've just not set it up yet. Uh, but the, I've done cold water therapy when I started kind of with the boys from Mount Matter Scotland when I was doing that kind of stuff. But I was away out seeing people from Helensborough and kind of out to Dumb Sorry, Dumbarton, it was. And they were all going to Loch Lomond. Uh, and they were all just getting into Loch Lomond. And they were just getting in. And they were immersing themselves in the, in the cold. But they were going up to there. Mm. And they were staying in for like, you know, well, Andy was staying in for three nights. And they were going up to there. And they were staying in for three nights. And they were staying in for like, well, and it ended up staying in for 15 minutes. But you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that your first no, time. It, it, it ain't over two minutes. It, it, it was it, as, it's just as good as the I see 90, 90 seconds, as we say. Uh, if you can do it, have it over 90 seconds, you're fine. But I was in because I just met all these guys and the lasses, and there was 40 of them, right? It was November. And they were all wearing, <laughs> it was getting, was getting, into, getting into Christmas actually, because they were all, but it was still November, but they were all wearing Christmas hats. So I thought, I'll one of your Christmas hats. <laughs> and I sat and I, and I walked in, think quite the thing, and I thought, ah, oh, I'll do this, and he bothers that. What's happening here? <laughs> and I was just under, obviously I went under it and eventually I started to realise because you've got to breathe through it mm -hmm. but you've also got to do, there's the, the, the Vim Hof, everybody talks about mm -hmm. the Vim Hof, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to do the, the, this, is it the horse? The, you've got to do that movement when oh, you come yeah. out so that your body's circulating again, right? Right. Uh -huh. And I was doing it and I was like, wow, this makes it a lot better. But the first time I didn't do that, first, I done 15 minutes and I walked out, had a towel, thought I'll be fine. I was chittering for about an hour after you it. Aye. Everybody done the off. I'm still sitting at the side of Lock Home and like, I can't, I can't <laughs> even move. So as it's dangerous, it's very dangerous. So he's got, he's got a, a, a mate that fishes, he's got a wee cabin up and lock on. He just got away, disappears, and that's yeah. him. You know, it's his wee, Aye. his get out, with, you know, and uh, and he's like, he says, you fall in, you fall in that in the summer. Aye. Aye. You've got 15 minutes. Aye. <laughs> I done it about three or four times after that and I think I get used to the horse movement right mm -hmm. I'm doing the old horse movement and you look stupid you feel stupid but you can actually feel you can actually feel because you're, you're down on your knees right you're, you're kind of on and you're doing all that right? you're tai chi up. right mm -hmm. I don't know not about tai chi I just see guys that tai chi right and you're like that that's moving this ball about but you can actually feel the heat you, through, if, yeah, you right, feel right. the heat can through your body again and it's amazing but don't get me wrong you still need to kind of run about you need to kind of walk and make sure you're alright <laughs> <I>, so <laughs> when I talk about cold water therapy that was one thing that it saves a lot of people uh, but I do cold showers every day mm. every morning every, maybe every night as well I'll do at least a couple of minutes but, I'll, but I'm done I start it warm and then I'll just turn it cold right, okay. and then I'll just and it gives you that shock but the whole point of the, the cold water therapy is the shock that it gives your body because it's waking it's waking up parts of your body that are dormant and uh, sleeping yeah. and I think nervous system aye right? uh, and that's exactly it aye. so it's all it's all about that but anyway that, that's one you thing for a sauna and come out and go into the, the bucket aye throw the bucket you know and, and that's like, hard oh, you know see I couldn't do that I think that quite hard but then I think you think about it when you used to go and swimming in that when you were young, aye. you jumped in the pool. The pool was nearly like jumped into a bath. Oh, no, no, it's true. freezing cold. So it's, it's freezing cold. So you were doing that. Mm -hmm. stuff but you're moving cold, about man. and then you're aye. okay, you're used to it, you know what I mean? But, but yeah. Aye. So I suppose cold water, uh, breathing, becoming aware. Yeah. Is is let's 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 get finished up, guys. Thank you so much. Paul John Dykes, thank you so much again. Mate. Thanks for asking us. Yeah. And I've learned loads just by sitting talking to you guys, you know. Oh, man. I'm going to have to try the cold water therapy. Yes. Yes, we'll see that next time. Mm. Brother Joe. I'll we'll see you exactly the same as Paul. I'm going to do this 3-2-1, right? You know, aye, aye, aye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three, two, one, right? He's went 1-2-3 yeah. here. Or 3-2-1, uh, aye. Uh, no, brother Joe, thank you again. No, again, uh, just exactly what you've said yourself there, Paul. And, uh, you know, sitting both your companies, excellent. Aye. And learning stuff all, new all the time. Aye, so that, aye. Taking aye. that in and, and enjoying it. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having us. Again, hopefully you'll be back in, Paul. Would be all right with Anything. that? Eventually. Yeah. Uh, mate, thank you so much again, man. Anytime at all, mate. Aye, thank you. I'm always in the tune anyway. So. Aye. <laughs> always free, mate. That's, that's, that's been brilliant, man. Aye, no, thank Obviously, you. Meeting these two and getting to know each other. Aye, aye, aye. Thank you. 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 Thank just need to get it downloaded, not uh, I mean? No, that's what I'll need to do now. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank see, you so see much. See me before I get banned again, you know what I mean? And then <laughs> starting for nothing and 
build myself back up. Ah, bro. Uh, hey, um, I need to give a wee shout out for the uh, one of the boys that is uh, one of my mates, uh, Raymond from Raymondo Towers. He helped me pick this t-shirt today. I was working with my day, and I thought I need something for the day. And we seen this t-shirt. He looked at it. I said, "Right, so that's for you, Raymond. Thank you so much for Raymond Raymondo Towers." You were laughing at that uh, again. The Yas is for our own. Again, the Yas is now part of Green Sunrise Podcast. Uh, I, I guarantee you, Paul John Dykes will be saying it tonight. He'll be shouting, yes, as, as well. we wido. Thank you so much, guys, for watching today's uh, episode. Share it out with your uh, friends and family. Please subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. I'm trying to build the numbers for that. We're at 102 subscribers, so let's get to 1,002. Uh, let's, get it, let's get it going. Have an awesome day. Uh, and if you're struggling with anything, please comment or contact me personally. You can get me on all the socials. And uh, yeah, let's connect people up with services that are going to help. Have an awesome day. Thank you very much. Well done, right.